Welcome back, everyone, to Conversations with Marvelous. Uh, it's been a, uh, it's been a minute. Uh, it was it hasn't been since I think the last time he was here was about a year ago. Uh, well, last month, December, to be exact, New Year's Eve night. So, but he's back. So, but but before I introduce my co-host, I just want to tell you guys if you guys have not caught up once again uh, last couple of days, we've had hypnotic. We had a great uh, conversation. Before that, we had news with Norby's. We talked about Taco Bell, Britney Spears, Hot Showers, and Taylor Swift. So, so before that, we had Carolyn Rodriguez and Mo Hustle from Texas. We covered some hot topics on that from uh, SPM to Dope House Records to Jenny69 to whoever. So make sure you definitely go check that out. And before that, we had... Baby Bounce from the Harbor Area, Gardena, to be exact. Definitely check out those interviews. See, a lot of you guys like to miss these interviews, and I'll tell you why. Because you guys want to go down the street to the other podcaster and watch that Jerry Springer show. We don't do that here. Okay. But uh, other than that, I want to thank everybody on the live chat, everybody who decided not to be on the live chat, everybody who decided not to be about the cheese, man. But if you want to be on the party line, once again, subscribe and you are allowed to chat. Uh, the membership is now up, so make sure you guys get the membership to receive exclusive content. The Super Chat is now up. If you guys want to promote your business, uh, put your business out there, um, whatever. You guys can donate 99 cents. It doesn't matter as long as you guys leave a Super Chat or whatever shout out or whatever question. Maybe you didn't get the chance to put it in the community because that's where I post my flyers where I say submit your questions for tonight's conversation. I got a few today, but it's not too late to put them in the Super Chat. That's the only way I'm going to read them. Other than that, um, I'd like to thank those who subscribed, everybody who unsubscribed, everybody who shared, everybody who decided not to share. But you are still watching. And I want to say what's up to all you podcasters with the fake pages that are watching me tonight. Without further ado, please allow me to introduce my co-host all the way from East Los, Marvelous Minds, Marvelous Inc. How are you, Marvelous? I'm good. Thank you. Shout out to all the homies from East LA. Thank you. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Uh, it's been a year. Man, it's been a whole year. Yes. Uh, how was your New Year's night? Did you just chill at home or did you go out? I didn't do nothing, bro. I, I think I stayed home and played um GTA. <laughs> is, is that your game? <laughs> yeah, nah, it, it's been my game shit. All I do is stay home now. Like I'm just I'm working, I'm home, taking care of the kids, working again and spare time I'm gonna play video games over. Okay. Now is that the only video game you play or do you play like various? Like for me, whenever I do play a game, it will be like uh like Madden. I I like to play football. Okay. Um damn. You know what? I got I got my old school Super Nintendo, so I'd be playing um Street Fighter. Oh, okay, and, that's and cool. Jam and all that shit. Yeah. Street Fighter. I w I like to say there are certain games that I like to challenge anybody and say I was the best. Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, uh, John Madden. So you think you're the best then? Well, not now, but at one point, yes, I would say I was the best. Okay. Even in the video games, like when you walk into the liquor store, when yeah. they used to have them back yeah, then. Yeah. I was the best even back then. So what were you? Did you like uh, Galaga or what was that one? Um, with the it was like a ball. Centipede. Centipede. Centipede uh, or Pac-Man. I, I, I was good at that one. Pac-Man or Miss Pac-Man? Which one are you talking about? Oh, I mean, I, you know what? I didn't even mean to bring that shit up. I swear I didn't. I swear I didn't. <laughs> it's okay. But you know the old school video game. Okay, Donkey Kong was my shit. Oh, okay, all right. Donkey Kong was my shit, and then it came out with, like, I think, Crazy Kong, but that was, like, a bootleg version right. version of it. But Donkey Kong, but the best that I've ever been was Star Castle. I don't know if you remember that one. Uh, Star Castle, Asteroids. Okay, yeah. Asteroids, I used to have all my men lined up, because every 10K points, you uh, get an extra ship. Okay. So that I was the best at that, too. That's dope. And, um, okay, what about Atari? That game on Pong. Was it Pong? Pong. Yeah. Like, bing, bing. I, I was just okay, because I... You had to handle it like this and yeah, yeah. push it with your thumb or unless you were, you know, I, I had a hard how, time with how? that. <laughs> I went side to side, not uh, up and down. Not up and down. Homie. So, but yeah, dude, uh, um, I was really good. I was a big time video game head. But when PlayStation came out, I, I started playing 007 and it started fucking me up because all you see is the gun going like this. 007, yeah. That one. I was good at that one, but not like the way I was Street Fighter or... Or the uh, the one I just said, uh, Mortal Kombat. Uh -huh. But Street Fighter was my shit, bro. That's right. You know. Yo, who did you pick? Who was your player? Ryu. Ryu? Ryu. Ryu. We're going to have to have a game. Ryu, yeah. Right. But uh, my brother used to have the actual game at his house. Okay. 
So I was still good. I was knocking motherfuckers what out. What do you mean bro. The, the old school game or the, the actual video game? the actual oh, the video game that you oh, put wow. a quarter in? All right. That one. Uh, before before I turned this into a studio, <laughs> mm-hmm. I literally was gonna turn this into a arcade, like a eighties arcade, Here honestly. Like and uh TV so we can watch football or whatever. Yeah. And then I just decided, let me just do the music thing and then maybe later on do it. Because I had to hook up with the actual video games, bro. Uh-huh. You know, so you want to play, you know, Asteroid. You want to play Galaga. You want to play, what was it, uh, Space Invaders. Uh-huh. You know, um, I'm just, I, I was just a video game, but now it's just one game. That's what's up. So, but it, it, now let me ask you this. If anybody wanted to play you, do you play online against anybody? Um, in GTA, yeah. I play online. Oh, well, what's your name? So maybe they can look you up. Um... Well, I have a modded account. It's, it's a modded account. Like, you can have, like, a bunch of money or whatever. Mm. Um, it's called Your Big Homie. And then um, uh, the other one, um, man, what is uh, the name on the other one? I think it's just Marvelous 1322. Marvelous 1322 or yeah. Your Big Homie. Yeah, yeah. Look him up. He's your big homie. Yeah, ver que, <laughs> que pasa. Other than that, uh, it's been about literally a little bit over a month. How's the tattooing thing going on? Because I noticed that when you always put, I got time right now. Do people really like hit you up? Oh yeah. ASAP. They hit me up quick. Um, it's going good. It, it's, it's slowed down though. Like really, um, from doing seven tattoos a day to maybe doing only three a day. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. It, it did slow down. Okay. And now let me ask you this. Cause I know I've asked you this on previous episodes, but since we're having a conversation, do you get, like weirdos that come through? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. I hate to say that, you know, because I don't want a person to think that, oh, right. was I the weirdo? But more than likely, they weren't. Like, if you're listening, no disrespect. But I get some weirdos. I get I get weirdos, and then I get ghetto people. Like, just some ghetto, like, like they don't know how to, I don't know. They're just very disrespectful out the mouth. You, you know, the, the, the sad part <clears throat> about having this here so close to my home mm. is that, when you say ghetto, I've had people that have, I, I've asked them and I, I've said, hey, listen, man, when you come, you're my guest, mm-hmm. you're allowed to bring two people. One time, one guy brought 15 people. I'm not lying to you, bro, and it really, really fucking pissed me off. Uh-huh. And I told the guy, I said, man, why did you bring all these people, bro? And he goes, he said this, well, they all wanted to come. Uh-huh. You know what's funny, bro? It, it, when people show up the deepest, it's always like the Paisa, like Paisa family, uh-huh. families or whatever. They bring their uncles, their tia, and everybody on no up. Shit. And the thing about that, it's cool. Like, I don't mind, you know, but my pad is real small, you know. And the other thing is that everybody's giving their opinion on the tag. Like, damn, I, I need to start this tattoo. I can't have you giving an opinion and then not being confused about their tattoo. You know what I mean? Right. I'm trying to get this done. But yeah, right. that's great. No, so, so what happened was this, and this is why I keep in mind, and this is uh, kind of some pointers to the podcasting world. If you're thinking about starting one or if you already start one, this is things you're going to have to look forward to because it's going to happen. It's unpredictable when your guest shows up. There's this one guy that uh, I said this, they showed up maybe like five minutes before going live and they were all around here. And I said, does anybody need to use the restroom? And they said, no. Uh-huh. Okay, cool. So we're about to go live. And during that time, my boy tells me, hey, we're going, in, we're going live in one minute. And I said, okay, cool. One guy gets up and he says, hey, bro, I need to go piss. <laughs> Better go outside. Now, keep in mind, there was nobody here. So I said, hold up. So I walked him into the restroom. <laughs> I trusted him. And I said, walk back out, bro, quickly. Yeah. Okay? So we are going live. And it's, it's 15 minutes and the guy's not back yet. So I'm thinking, what the fuck is he doing? Okay. So this is when we used to take breaks every 30 minutes. And then right before break, he walks in. Uh-huh. So when we take a break, I walk up to him and I go, where were you at? And he said, oh, I was just chilling in your pad. What? Damn. So I said, oh, okay. Doing what though? It, that, that's just what he said. So what I did, I went into the restroom. I wanted to go check. Yeah, yeah. I went into the restroom and this dude pissed on the bathroom stall, bro. Yeah. Like, he didn't even lift it up, bro. And I was just like, okay. I came back in here, and I told my boy, I said, bro, this interview is over. Yeah. Unless you make your boy go oh, clean boy. his piss up. And he yeah. said, what? And I said, yeah, man. So I walked him in, and he looked. He goes, oh, no, no. Luckily, this guy had enough respect for me that he said, clean it up, bro. And after that, all you guys got to bounce. Yeah. So 
That's what you guys got to look forward to. So hey, that's some, ghetto for me. That is ghetto though, for real. Because I've had that happen to me, homie. And and like I'll, I'll let somebody use the restroom, and I don't understand where these dudes, and especially a dude, like lift up that fucking seat, homie. Yeah. There's women that sit on there, you know, kids, yeah. whatever. I don't understand why why they leave the seat. Who didn't teach them that? That's they, like a rule one. Number <laughs> one, they most likely don't have respect for themselves. So when they don't have the respect for themselves, they're definitely not going to respect you. For real. You know, and so, yeah, I, I, I can't hang around people like that, but oh well. Other than that, um, any good books that you, you might have read lately? Because we're going to get into one. And um, I know a little bit about it, but we'll eventually get into it. I don't want to mention it just yet, but you, have you read anything good lately? No, I haven't. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And um, has anybody recommended anything good to you lately? You know what? Yeah, but I'm not going to remember the name of that book, bro. They okay. sent it to me, but I, I have so many messages, I'm not going to be able to find it. Okay. Any documentaries, any docuseries that you're seeing lately? We're going to bring up one yeah. docuseries You know what I just soon. seen? Uh -huh. I was watching. Uh, it's called... Oh man, it's right here, bro. I just seen it. Um, uh, Ruby Ridge. I haven't you heard about it. the Ruby Ridge story. No, I have not. Share with us. So there's this guy. He was in. I I think he was in Vietnam and stuff. He was a decorated um military dude. He was a Green Beret and stuff. And um he got married and you know he started you know getting into church and stuff like that and Bible prophecy. Him and his wife. Oh really? Yeah, they got married and um they ended up moving. I guess to towards um. Utah somewhere, uh, wherever Ruby Ridge is at, you guys could look it up. I don't want to say mis mistake the name for something else, but yeah, they ended up moving on a mountaintop or whatever. And um, I guess there was a white supremacist group that stayed by where they were living or whatever. Okay. And um, they're they're they were known as like cr Christian, really. Um, they're um the white supremacists. Yeah, they, yeah, but they're they're like it's like a Christian white supremacist thing or whatever. They were I don't know what the name of it is or whatever. Right. But it was like a church they had. It's just based on a true story. No, it's real, bro. It really happened in 1992. Wow. So what happened was they were already watching the white supremacist people or whatever, and I guess one of the federal agents got in contact with him and and wanted to get him into doing like some illegal stuff or whatever. Um, just to turn him to see if they could flip him or whatever. So yeah. I guess he ended up sawing off some shotguns, allegedly some uh, the tips of them or whatever, and um, they end up you know raiding his pad for that, you know, so they could flip him. And he didn't end up showing the court. So since he didn't show up the court, they send the marshals to his pad, and the marshals ended up you know getting into a shootout. But they shot his dog, and the kid was one of his kids. He trained you know if he trained his kids like if anybody comes on our property. You know, you know, watch out for them. Be careful. It might be a threat or something. Right. You know, the government is, you know, they were really like against the government. Okay. So, um, but not to the point as where they were, they were like doing things uh, uh, like intentionally. They were just like, you know what? We're going to do our own thing. We don't want no part of what the government's doing. And this is the church speaking, if you will. Well, it's that, fam the oh, that family. Oh, that family. Okay. Yeah. They, they just wanted to, you know, live a good life, you know, a long, prosperous life or whatever. They had their land. They had their nice ass house. Mm -hmm. They had acres of land. And um, so here comes these marshals or whatever, and the marshals shoot the dog because the dog is barking at them, and they didn't want them to know that they were there. So the kid gets hurt, and he goes, "You shot my, you shot my dog," and he shoots. He, I guess, allegedly shoots the marshal, or somebody shot the marshal. It, supposedly, it's, it's that the one of the other marshals was shooting behind him and killed him. But the stories are here and there. With it, I don't know. So, anyways, um, they get into a shootout. The the son dies. So it's it's. Just, I don't want to tell the whole story, bro. Right. It's really really good. But uh -huh. if you look it up, it's called the um, that Ruby Ridge story. Wow. Okay. It's a really good documentary, bro. You did, did, you, did you finish watching yeah, it all? the whole thing. I don't want to want to give it up. Like if uh, I, yeah, if don't I give the it whole up. story, but a lot of things happen in that. Okay. In one week or a week and a half, I watched the entire series of uh, Godfather of Harlem. I know that's been out for a couple of years. Uh -huh. But my boy, uh, DJ Toro from Harlem... Told me you gotta watch it, bro. You gotta watch it. And I was like, "For is that good?" He goes, "Yeah, bro. I'm from Harlem, so I'm telling you, check it out." I was like, "All right." I watched it. I watched three. I think it's ten episodes per each series. And let me tell you something. Forrest Whitaker did a great job playing uh, Bumpy Johnson, and they had this great actor for two seasons play Malcolm X. The third season they used a different Malcolm X, but for the first two. They had a great guy playing Malcolm X, and Bumpy Johnson and Malcolm X were actually, I believe, 
friends in real life. But it was actually, bro, it's all about selling heroin uh, during that time. And uh, it was actually really, really good, bro. So I recommend that one. But you say you recommend Ruby Ridge. Yep. And w- where was that one at? Because uh, Godfather Harlem was on Amazon. This is on uh, YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So it was free then. Yeah, you could watch it for free. Okay, that'll work. How long has that one been out? Um, man, the one that I watched, I was just trying to look at the at how long it was, bro, or when it was posted, but uh-huh. I'm not sure. There's a lot of diff- there's a lot of different ones, but the I think the main one was on um, was it 60 minutes? I'm, I'll find it, bro, right now. Okay, my bad. So how are you holding up in this rain, man? I know you have to drive from East Los. It's over crazy, here. Was it man. bad? Everything's flooded. The freeway was halfway flooded. Everybody driving with their hazards on, man. Try not to skid out. Hey, today, do we still use that word when a guy has high waters? Do we still say that dude's flooded? Nah, I don't even think. You know what? You know what came? Uh, uh, bow bottoms came back in style. Really? Yeah. Well, they, well, I hope only girls are wearing them. Nah, guys are wearing them. <laughs> yeah. I hope no rappers start wearing them. I bet you they will. But remember back in the days, <laughs> the girls would wear bell bottoms nice and tight, and then it came down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had the body for it, uh-huh. okay? But a dude? <laughs> we'll see Norby's at Taco Bell and whatnot. No, we need to get Norby some, some bell bottoms. Get it. Taco Bell bottoms. Uh, get it. Yeah, most definitely. Get okay. It. You know what? Um, we're going to go ahead and jump right into the questions because some people delivered uh, some pretty good questions and some comments. And I kind of want to just touch on something that, um, uh, you know, and to be honest with you, we always get a lot of questions, but this time we really didn't get a lot. But we're going to go ahead and start with you guys' questions. Once again, if you guys wanted to submit a question, you guys should have put it on the community on YouTube. If you use it on your phone, go to my page, Tony Vision. If you're subscribed, uh, there's videos, there's live, there's community membership. Click on community there. You can see the flyer. And I put up a question every time we go live. If you have a question for Marvelous, please include it in there. You can leave it in there and I'll read it out and... You know, even if you have, just have a comment. Real quick, Tony, my bad. Yeah. If anybody wants to see the one that I seen, um, it's called Ruby Rich. It says full documentary American experience on P- uh, PBS on YouTube. Okay. So you can see the one that I seen. They really narrated it really good. And so hopefully you like it. That'll work. Okay. So this one comes from Arizona. It says much love to the wizard and marvelous from AZ. Uh, drop some gems. We're going to try. Okay. This one says... Yo, um, yo, are you guys losing power down there? I'm in the bay. The storm knocked out a ton of power. Stay dry. That sucks when you can't get your power back up and it's ugly and cold like this. You better have a lot of candles. I'd say water, flashlights, and if you have a fireplace, have some wood. I went out and bought some wood today. So just in case anything happens. So what do you recommend when the power goes out? Get a generator. I've been saying that. Okay. Get a generator. Get a generator. You know what? I think we need a generator regardless for what the future holds for us, to be yeah, honest with you. For real. Yeah. It, not just for the rain. Yeah. But pay attention. And honestly, most of you guys already know. I don't think we're telling you guys anything new, but start growing your own vegetables. Yeah. Start growing your own vegetables. Yep. Okay. The reason why I'm telling you is because I worked at a warehouse <clears throat> uh, where pretty much all of our vegetables were hybrids, bro. Damn. You know, I mean, why do we have to put now organic? And then I find out just recently that a lot of these warehouses, they're just putting organic and it's not organic, bro. Yeah, you're right. Right. So try a tomato that you've grown or a cucumber, no matter how small it is, if from your yard and compare it to the hard, bulky, waxy, shiny one from the market. Yeah. It may not look the same, but it's a world of difference when it comes to flavor. Yeah. So, Okay. Uh, what's your guys' I don't know why they, but I'm gonna say it anyway. What's your guys' go to takeout meal from a Chinese restaurant? Go. Oh man, you know what? I don't know a good Chinese food restaurant today. I know one back in the day that everybody used to go to. It's called the Yellow Deli, and I'll have, I know in Monterey Park. Okay. Yellow, if anybody remembers it, it was across the street from Shakey's. Okay. Bomb. What? But what would you order? Everything. They had everything. Barbecue, pork. Now, is this one of the ones where, like, let me get a dollar of that, let me get a dollar of that, because I really don't eat that. No, they actually hooked it up till they couldn't close the plate anymore. Like, they really, oh, it was like that? Yeah. Okay. Like, but I'm it talking was about gone. restaurants. Like, all the food was good. Oh, wow. I don't know. I mean. Like, you sit down, 
Oh, a restaurant? Yeah, I thought they said fast food. No, I'm sorry. What, or did no, I just say? I'm sorry. Takeout meal. Oh, that's so. What's your yeah, guys takeout? Ta- okay. I mean, a restaurant. That's different. Bro. That's right. You're right. You're right. Okay, I'm gonna answer it from from when you sit down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because when I was younger, I, I, you know, dollar Chinese food. Let me get a dollar of this, dollar of that, dollar. And I just got tired of that shit. Uh-huh. There's a place called Szechuan. And um, in the 80s, uh-huh. there was a thing that you would order, and maybe they still have it. It's called shrimp with sizzling rice. With sizzling rice. And what they would do, Marvelous, they would bring you a platter, mm-hmm. and it looked like baked Rice Krispies. It literally looked like Rice Krispies. And then they will bring you the shrimp with the sauce. And then they will pour it. And you know how fajitas, when they bring them out, yeah. that's how it would, it would be, bro. And um, it was amazing, bro. It's amazing. I just recently uh, tried to find out if they still had it. I called, hey, do you guys still have shrimp with sizzling rice? Not too many people have it today because not too many people order it because not too many people know about it. But I'll, I order that, obviously, with some house rice. When I say house rice, they call it Szechuan rice, oh. which comes shrimp, pork, uh, 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 chicken, whatever, all in one steamed brown rice. So that's what <laughs> I would just order, bro, just that. Yeah. So because let's be honest, everybody just wants to order orange chicken. Yeah, all the time. Orange chicken and uh, what is it, beef and broccoli. Yeah. And, and what's another one? Sweet and sour pork and white rice. And that's all we eat. Even they know. Hey, that, is that beef and broccoli? Is that really beef in there? You know, I don't know. I don't know. You know, one guy told me a joke one time, but he made me really think. He said, have you ever seen a Chinese restaurant take out the trash? And I was like, no. He goes, because there is none. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. You know? So I was like, have you seen out there in, um, I forgot what country it is, um, I, the Philippines or by Vietnam somewhere. But they get people take out food and they recook it yes <laughs> like, like food that people throw away right yeah and they recook it yeah and they just add ketchup packets and all that and they refry it and all that dirty huh oh, let, let they're me... taking out pieces of hamburger homie and they're throwing it and then they're bunching it up with chicken bone and all that and people are buying it see and that's what i'm asking could, could you just try it never Ever. You're putting, literally putting poison in your body, bro. Like, I, I just, or like, the, just poison recently. Poison on top of poison. Yeah, I just recently saw somebody, like, they skinned the damn rat. They didn't skin his head. You can see his, still see his teeth. Yeah, yeah. They open them up. They fillet his ass. They yeah. throw some food in there. And then they, like, it, it looks like a tortilla that they smash rice on it. Yeah. They throw the damn rat on there, and they roll his ass up, and they give it to him. Like, what the? Hell no. Nah. Hey, that, what you're talking about, it's called Pug Pug. pug. Oh, okay. That's what it's called. What's it yeah. called? Pug Pug. P A G P A G. It's called Pog Pug. Damn. And if you look it up on YouTube, you'll see that. Pog Pug. You want some Pog Pug? Like a pug. Fuck. Not to be confused with two dirty. Okay. Anyway, so that, my thing is that was, look it up, uh, shrimp over sizzling rice. That's, <laughs> bro, let me tell you something. Probably the best Chinese food I've ever had, bro. It, uh-huh. was, it was just amazing, bro. Okay, so my next one is, um, do either one of you guys know what time Spencer Baca will be calling? I have no idea. No, I don't know, bro. No idea. I know that was a joke, but okay. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. Somebody left a comment. I eat fools splishing and splashing in the mud puddles right now. Okay, we'll be watching. Marvelous still wearing a bandana on his face. But a question mark. There it is there. Okay. Here's a pretty interesting question. Do you both believe only in the Old Testament or both? Go ahead. There's no such thing as a separate a separation when it comes to Scripture. So I, there, you have to believe in both because it's all included. There's no separation of New Testament or Old. I've met some New Testament Christians that don't even care about the Old Testament. Right. I, I really don't understand that. But you know what? I don't know if I ever asked this, Marvelous. At what age would you say you started to believe that the Bible could be possibly true? Do you recall around what age? When you maybe early 20s, teenager? Um, I mean, I believed, but I don't think any of us can really say that we truly believe because we're really a, 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 
how do you say it? A visual people. Like we want to see miracles. We right. want to know. We want to, oh, I heard his voice or I seen a fucking angel. Like I didn't see that shit. Like I want to see it, homie. Like, right. yeah, I believe, but how far does that word even go? You know, like, I don't know, man. I, I could say I believed when I, when I got all Christian, like I, I got all saved when I was like 14 years old and for a month. That yeah. I was all fucking Christian and shit. Even got rid of my CDs and I try to be all holy, you know. And I thought I had faith back then, or I thought I believed, but I know there was doubt in me. You know what I mean? But I think the more shit that I went through, um, like you know, any things that I went through, I knew that there had to be a God or right. you know something of a higher that controlled everything because there's no way that I should have been here still for the things that have happened, you know. So. Right. I did. I, I do believe like I have, I have my, my faith got stronger maybe when I was like 18, I guess I could say that then, you know, I, I kind of want to share a weird <laughs> side of, um, being, being a Catholic. And I'll tell you why, because I grew up being a Catholic. Now I don't consider myself anything, but I had friends that I grew up with in the neighborhood that we all did dirty shit. I'm not going to sit here and act innocent. But we all did dirty shit, marvelous. But every time we did dirty shit, we'd always pray and ask God to forgive us. It was almost like a premeditated prayer, being a Catholic, that like, okay, we're gonna gonna do this, Holly. Uh -huh. But God, please protect us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I had or, homies do that. I had homies do that. I had a homie. Oh my God, this fool is the worst. Like his his mind ain't all there, and he's done dumb shit, you know. But this fool, he had a habit. And this fool would always. Do the sign of the cross. Yeah. Always do the sign of the cross. I'm your homie, Even bro. Even before he go, like, he see an enemy. Boom. <laughs> like, what would you do that for? You know, like, what would you do that for, homie? Yeah. Oh, it's because, you know, to protect me, you know, like, <laughs> out of your damn mind, homie. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a homies that were like, you know, they were big time slang. You know, they sold dope. And every time, like, hey, man, God protected me on this one, bro. Like, mm -hmm. seriously. I thought this fool was going to try to act stupid, but I sold him three birds. That was the biggest one I've ever had. Yeah, yeah. Wednesday, I'll be in confession, fool. You need to start getting right, Tony. Yeah, yeah. Wednesday, I'll be in confession, get a clean slate. I'll be good for the weekend. Yep, yep. People have the biggest misconception on blessings today. Yeah. You see on social media, oh, my God, I got this money. I'm so blessed. Oh, I got this job. Oh, oh I, got, I got this car. I'm so blessed. Oh, my God, I just paid off my house. I'm so blessed, Tony. That nothing on this fucking earth, on this world, is a blessing. Nothing, if you ain't keeping the law. Right. Point blank. Yeah. You could say you're Christian all you want, a holy moly, listen to Christian music, whatever you want to call yourself. Nothing in this world is a blessing unless you're, kept, you're keeping the law. Or unless you do this. Nothing. It's a distraction from, from having a true blessing. Right. No, you're right. You're right. And But, yeah, I believe, I, for, for the sake of the question, I'm going to say I believe in both, even though it's one. Okay, but I believe that you can't have one without the other. They're hand in hand. It's just one book, you know, broken up into 66 books by, what did I say? Uh, 40 different authors. Uh -huh. So, you know, um, when I read it, it blessed me. I believed it. Um, and I just saw how misinformed I was thinking I can do bad things and then do the sign of the cross and I'm good. You know, because that's what I was, I can't even say I was taught that. That's just what I thought. Yeah. And then I remember when all my drug dealing homies had, uh, um, I, I forgot what kind of material it was. I want to say ELO, but it was like thread. It goes around their neck with a little pitcher. Yeah. And it was, uh, are you familiar with Jesus Malverde? Yeah, we used to have that too. Okay, yeah. There's yeah. one in the front and one in the back. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it was to protect us from, yeah. you know, and so that way we could do our shit. Yeah. But we'll be protected. Here, mijo, carry this rosary. I used to have all that. Carry all that like a pendejo. Yeah, and then today, what's trending over that is the uh, uh, um, Santa Muerte. Yeah, the, the ojo. Yeah. The ojo, yeah. Yeah. So it, there's just so much crazy things out there that people depend on, you know. But instead of sticking to, to the true word, you know, so. Anyways. I, th I think I think for, for me, though, um, what... what what really like um man stamped my belief is when i got into studying torah and stuff like that bro yeah. and that that just broke down broke down everything that that um these religions were trying to do 
like there the, you you seen the truth on what scripture really was and what right. it's really laws and prophecy that's it like it yeah. has nothing it's not a story that somebody wrote right like these are dream visions and right. these are dream visions that we're still having today but nobody talks about them right no you no you're absolutely right you know but i will say this and please when we mention the scriptures don't do not look at it as a religious book because religion has been man-made and in the name of religion there has been more people killed in the name of religion than wars than pestilence than famines than gang violence than anything else yeah. more people have died because of religion you know and that's what separated people you know I'm a Baptist, you're a Pentecostal, you're a Pentecostal, I'm an apostolic, I'm an apostolic, I'm an Anglican, I'm an Anglican, I'm a Calvinist, I'm a Calvinist, you're a Presbyterian, <laughs> and none of us get along. Yeah, yeah. But we claim we have the truth. Yeah, yeah. That's what religion does. Yeah, for real. So. For real. Okay. Okay, somebody wrote this, and I don't know why he would send this. Tariq Nasheed put a clip of you on his channel talking about rep reparations. Yep. But but why? But who so, was saying of so, you or me? Oh, I don't know. That's what that's what I didn't understand. I know those guys, those twins, put a video up on me. Um, what are they called? The what twins are these? They're called the the Hodge twins, but they took it down because I couldn't find it. But they were talking about the same the same thing about giving our land back. I mean, but that's gonna be the argument between you know who gets reparations first. The blacks claim to to have to say that you know they're the first person or whatever. I mean, and, you know, Rasa is saying, this is our land. You know what I mean? Okay. Here's a question, and I wish, I wish maybe somebody that can speak for them would be here. Because let's just say, Marvelous, that I'm not looking for an argument, but I'm just looking to understand. Right. So are you saying that every person that is born colored black should get money? No. Hell no. No, no he, this is what I would ask him. Oh, okay, okay. You know, that's what I would ask him, uh -huh. because I have nephews... Uh, that are half black and half Mexican. Right. So because they were born looking black, they're going to get money too? I mean, people that are truly indigenous to this land, they need that. That's their money. Right, Point right, blank, right. period. You know, all the treaties have been broken. You know, land has been stolen. Right. You know, and they built democ uh, democracy. People have been uh, murdered, bro. Yeah, people have been murdered. Massacres, raped, hung, you know, used for alligator bait. But what people need to get out of their, their head and this is the indoctrination in their head is the word black, the word black and the word brown and the separation of those two words. Yeah. You know, the, the real true blacks are from Africa. Yeah. They're, they're African, Afro-American, not the Negroes. They're indigenous to this land too. And the, uh, the, uh, people can hate me for that, but it's real. Africans right. are not, are not Negroes. They're two different people. But the indoctrinational system, the school teaches that they're include they're, in, they're the same, and right. they're not. They're not, bro. Just like we're not the same as you know. There, how many how many um, people can you include in the word Hispanic or Latino? How yeah. many people can you include in the word Asian? You know, how many people are yeah. ethnicities? You know what I mean? Yeah. But it, that was one thing that I would ask someone that represents <clears throat> that movement. You know, does every black person here in the U.S. Do they deserve that money, or is it only certain families that can trace back that maybe their ancestors were slaves? Yeah, yeah, it's going to be real hard. Yeah, it's going to be and really hard, And I bet hard, you bro. the government's going to come through and say, you know what, well, your dad's dad, dad, and we have it on record here. They could throw people off like that, too. Yeah. They're going to throw people off with their blood, with their blood work, too, that fake-ass shit that they made. Oh, yeah. well, Noah says here that you're 10% fucking Irish and you're 5% uh, Scottish and... Whatever the hell they want to bring up or make yeah. up. And PR people are going to be like, oh, yeah, you see, they told me what I was, you know. You know what? Somebody brought me that uh, years ago, bro. I want to say maybe five or six years ago, the Ancestry.com thing. Yeah, yeah. Where you send in your spit and yeah. shit like that. Yeah. I still have it, bro. You know, like I, I never really cared to hand over my DNA to the government. Yeah. You know, just so they can have a record. Oh, that's Tony. We'll tell him mm -hmm. he's 10% uh, Vietnamese. You know, 2% Puerto Rican. Yeah. He's 8% Swahilian. Yeah. And, uh, you know, by the time he gets back to me, I'm not even Mexican no more. Yep. And what does the Bible say? How do you, how do you determine the pedigree of your bloodline? Well, that's going to be a big debate. And I don't want to get into it. It's a debate, though. It's it, biblically. It, it I, I, I understand. the pedigree of your father. Of your, of your father. Right. Period. Right. 
We carry the sperm. No, and I agree with you 100% we, we on that part. orgasm. But you have to look at it two ways when it comes. Understand where I'm, where I'm going with this. Where? When it comes to the birth of Christ. Okay, what about him? He okay. was the pedigree of his father. I understand. And I agree with you. Joseph. Well, where did his blood come from? Or Judah. Okay. What, what right. I understand. But that was the... I'm not trying to hard this. No, but tell me. I want to... Oh, let's okay. have this conversation. Where did his blood come okay. from? Okay, from the father. No, it didn't. It that's came the, from the father, bro. That is the bro. miraculous conception. That is a, that's that, what I'm talking that's about. The miraculous conception. Yeah, that's the story of Semiramis, not the Messiah. No, I'm not talking. You're talking about the Tower of Babel. I'm talking about... Uh, uh, who who uh, got Mary pregnant? Who got The Mary Holy pregnant? Spirit. Wrong. The Holy Spirit Wrong. descended upon we, her. Do, we should go to scripture then and read it then. Okay. Because it, it clearly states that he came from the seed of Joseph. Who did? The Messiah. Okay, so you're believing right now that Joseph impregnated Mary? Uh, in fact, the Bible says that. Torah says that. The miraculous conception story where the sun rays. Now, th this is new to me. You're surprising I know it is me. Because you don't know the story of Semiramis. I that's do know why. the story. I'm trying you, to tell you. Then that you said story was spread out to all the nations. Every single that nation. That son was named Tammuz. You're talking about. Uh, every single nation has a, has a Mary and a, and, a, and, a Messiah. And, and I believe that. And that's the same story as Semiramis, not Mary. So you don't believe that Jesus Yeshua was the story of the Holy Spirit descended upon Mary and she became pregnant? You don't believe that then? So you don't believe in the scripture that says that it is of Joseph's seed? Uh, I, okay, what Joseph are you talking about? Joseph His that was father. Uh, oh, uh, no, let me finish. Right. No, go ahead, go ahead, bro. You're talking about Joseph that was married to uh, Mary, who is named Maraim, or are you talking about Joseph from the Old Testament as far as one of the, uh, the 12 tribes of Israel? His actual father, bro, Mary and Joseph. Okay. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't believe that, and he's going to have to show it to me, yeah. but we'll, that will be for okay. another discussion yes. because he says that he could show me in Scripture. I could show him in Scripture where it doesn't say that. But where it doesn't say that. Okay, you heard that, right? Yes. You heard that? The next one, you heard. He, say that one more time, Tony. One more time, please, because I love this. I love it. Okay. This is what I love. I'm going to prove to him that what he believes is totally bogus. It is not true. It does not exist. Okay. Okay. And I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna emphasize that because I know he doesn't know yet, because that would be blasphemy <laughs> to change any words that are in the Bible. It is blasphemous. Do right? you, you understand know? the words that are coming, coming out, out of my, my mouth? mouth? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, but it's gonna be interesting. I'm, but I'm glad we brought this up. So it's all good. I just don't want to argue. If we go step by step, scripture by scripture, right, right, right. you know, then we'll be able to and go from there. Right, right. So, all right. Uh, Question for Tony A. Would you collaborate with Dixon Flannels? I've never heard of Dixon Flannels. Have you? No, not at all. And have your own flannel and what color schemes uh, would you have? I don't know who Dixon Flannels are, but if somebody ever told me I want to do a flannel for you, uh, first two colors that come to my mind, to believe it or not, are blue and black and blue and red. I mean, uh, black and red. Black and blue, Black and red. And I'll tell you why. I don't know why these numbers, these colors have always stuck to me. My high school colors have, have always been black and red. Our rival school colors have always been black and blue, which is Carson High and I was Banning High. And these were rivals in the 80s. So I would do those first two colors and then I would do black and brown, but obviously with different designs. So, but yes, that's what I would. That's what I would do. What about you, Marvis? If somebody wanted to sponsor you for a flannel, what would be your first two colors that you would do with two different flannels? I would do a, a black and gray and a, a blue and gray just because those are the two main neutral colors. Okay. What, what were your high school colors? Um, man, I went to, well, Garfield, a gray and blue. You went to down. Garfield? I don't, yeah, I don't think you ever told me that. Yeah, I went to Garfield. I but I only went to Garfield for like six months. Okay. Well, I only yeah. went to Banning for like a year and a half. I went to high school for like five months, six months. Okay. I went to Birmingham for like six months. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Did you ever attend the Garfield and Roosevelt, Roosevelt game? Yeah. yeah. You know what? Growing up, we used to always think that that's where all the fine girls went, bro. It, they, it, I'm going to be honest with you. There was beautiful girls. We have beautiful, we have beautiful, our bloodline, homie. Okay. We have beautiful women with all respect. All good. What are you looking Okay, I thought he was. <clears throat> okay, question for both. If y'all were to win the lottery, I think this is a good question. Yeah. And I think this is one of the ones that's on the caption, you guys. If y'all were to win the lottery, would it change you? For the better or worse? If you don't what, bro? I'm so sorry. Okay. 
I'm looking if for y'all that were to win the lottery, will it change you for the better or worse? I think that's a fair enough question. And let me tell you why, Marvin. It's, it's saying if you won this much money, let's just say you won, I don't know, $50 million, right. okay? And after taxes, you got $30 million, whatever, right. okay? I've known people that have told me this. I prayed for God not to ever make me rich. And I said, why is that? And he told me this. He said, because I know I would leave my wife and go back and start whoring around. Damn. He said, I would leave my family. I would destroy my family. He said, because I know myself. Wow. He said, if I had, I'd go back to gambling. I'd go back to whoring around. He said, so I pray, God, keep me content. I'm cool right here. He's, I'm afraid of myself. That's what he said. Because he knows what he's capable of. So there are, that's what I believe that's why he asked, you know, would it make you better or worse? For, for him, I could probably say well, it will make him worse. Yeah, I think, I think it would depend on a, on a person's moral. Yeah. You know, morals or whatever. But then, I mean, I don't know. I always, I always like, you know, I always say a little prayer, like, to bless me with something that I could bless somebody else with. Yeah. Like, not to sound all corny and cheesy or nothing like that, but. But you're being I, honest. I think if people, like, imagine if they gave you a million dollars a day, Tony, and they said, here, you know what? I'm going to give you a million dollars a day, but you have to spend it on somebody else. Like, you know, can you find somebody? And if you don't spend it all on somebody else in one day, then you don't get it tomorrow. But until right. you have to keep on finding people, finding people. But, I mean, I don't know. It depends on a, on a person. What about you? Just speak about yourself. How do you think it will, it will, it will make you? Do, do you think that maybe some of them old habits, some of them old ways of thinking could creep back up because of things that you wanted to do back then, now you can? Hmm. I think I'm now at the point where I'm able to to really take a step back and, and make a, a good decision on what I'm going to do with it. As opposed to if I was in my 20s, heck, yeah, I would, I would run amok. I would run amok. I would probably s spend all that money on dumb shit, bro. Like, yeah. buy all the guns in the world. <laughs> and I girl. guess this question could also apply to a mature or not mature person. If you're a not mature person, yeah, if yeah. you're immature, yeah. It's, it'll probably, you know, because look, let's be honest. I know certain family members, and I'm not going to mention no names, that if I bless them, I know it will destroy them, bro. Yeah. It would literally destroy them because I already know how they are with little bit of money. Yeah. With little bit of money, they're going broke, trying not to look broke. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, so with me, where I'm at right now in my life, um, number one, of course, I would ask God for guidance on how uh, and what to do with these finances to give me wisdom with these finances. Number one, if he told me, you know, invest it, open up businesses, that's what I would do. So to keep something coming back in. Yeah. Then obviously have my family set and I'm, and I'm just using a $30 million example. Make sure that my children, my family is set even things for my grandchildren. Yeah. I'd probably even put it to the point where maybe on some of them, because I know some of them, you can't touch it till you're this age, uh -huh. you know? Or instead of maybe giving them money, maybe telling my son, I'm buying you this business. This is your now. You're going to take care of it. I'm not going to give you cash. Make your own cash. Mm -hmm. And then somehow I would do something to give back to the community. I, you know, like I said, I always said at times I, I want to open up, a, I want to work at a, museum or library. I would do something different. I would open up a building. I would call it something learning center where people could come and learn real history. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's what I would like to do. And it'll all be for free. Just sign up on certain days. You can come on certain days. We'll be talking about this on certain days. We'll be talking about that and lectures. That's what I want to do more of education and then feed the people that come, you yeah. know? So that's, that's what I would do. Yeah. So <clears throat> The second part of the question was, once again, will it change you for the better or worse? Will it cause problems or destroy relationships with family, friends, etc.? cetera? Um, you know, Marvelous, if you came home and you went and here, Marvelous, and they hand you a $30 million check, how many friends or families will come out of the woodworks, bro? Every damn buddy. Yeah. Everybody. Excellent. How many, how many, let's be honest, how many women, girls, how many? Oh, <laughs> I don't know, homie. I mean, whoever whoever I had contact with, I guess, would be like, hey, oh, my God, I haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah. You know, that happened with the whole YouTube shit, too, you know? Like, when a video came out fucking when? 2014. Oh, my God, I seen you on YouTube. 
Yeah. Like, what the fuck? like so what? I'm a yeah. regular person like you. Like, what does that matter? No, I I remember when I first heard of you, you know, um, I went through uh, this one weenie to to get to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then we got connected and he got, he got jealous, I guess, because me and you became friends. Yeah, before that. Really? Before that. Wow. Okay. But that's, it's all good. I mean, you know, and that's sad, bro. You know, for you to meet somebody and you don't even know about nothing or nobody and this person just smutting another person up that you don't even know and you're like, damn, what the fuck? Like, man, yeah. I don't even know him or I don't even know you, fool. Like, why are you even telling me all that shit? You know, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to change the subject, but yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> so... I I do think it will destroy relationships like Definitely. this person that that said, if I became rich, I know what I it would do to me. Second, yeah. okay. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna read this one. This one's hilarious, bro. It says, if Blue Pan sat in his mama's house in his extra small hoodie and talked shit about you, would you be tempted to toss his muppet ass on the ground and kick a field goal? I don't know who you guys are talking about, but was it what's the name? Or what's his name? He said or what do you say? He said if blue pun. Oh, I think he's talking about blue dildo. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean it, it, I mean a lot of people hide behind cameras and shit. That's just dumb, you know? Like uh, we're yeah. grown men out here, homie. Exactly. Like, okay, so here we go. Uh, much respect to a marvelous and Tony. Okay, that's one. About to be a great episode. Okay. Then the next one. What are your thoughts? Okay, here's another one that we put on the caption. What are your thoughts on YouTuber Little Moco doing Mexican parodies and not being of Mexican descent? Are you familiar with that guy? I am. I didn't even know that he wasn't Raza. And yeah. then I don't even really watch him. I think I just seen like, um, I think he did like a music video I seen one time. And then um, what else I see of him? He's a fool that paints like the marker shit on his Yeah, it's like one big old drop. Yeah, yeah, like, that fool. Yeah, I think I've seen, like, maybe one or two videos of that fool, like, go viral. But yeah, I don't you, really know about him like that. Yeah, I, I don't really... I think I might have watched, like, some dumb shit. I, I thought his stuff was dumb, but obviously he has a fan base. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think Texas, but I don't know exactly where from Texas. Um, hey, You know what is sad, though, Tony? Like, back in the day, people actually used to be funny. Like, they're yeah. funny. You know, even the prank. Remember the... um. The hidden camera shows and all that. Yeah, even yeah. Like Jamie Kennedy experiment. When the, Those are like some of the first podcasters, even though they were on TV. Right. Like that was really podcasting where they went out in the public and all that and did all that. But now you don't even got to be funny. They just put stupid shit. And the more stupid you can be or the more dumb you could act on, on in front of the camera, the more views you're going to get, bro. And that's what's fucked up. Or the it. more your fucking brains are gone from, from all that scante. Yeah, and not saying that we're the smartest people, you know what I mean? But it's just sad, you know, it's sad to see that shit. Like, damn, these motherfuckers are so young, homie. I was getting money at that age. I mean, I might have been doing dumb shit, but right. I wasn't making myself look like a fucking idiot in front of everybody. You know, okay, uh, here's my thoughts. I don't even know if he is Mexican or isn't Mexican, yeah. half Mexican. I, I don't know. Yeah. But my thing is this. Let's just say he's a white kid. I don't know. I'm just saying, let's just say. Um, say I wanted to, I wanted to do parodies on white people. How do I go about doing it? It would have to be some racial shit. You know, everything about us is racial. Everything Absolutely. about blacks is racial. Exactly. You know, when they do jokes, I mean, it might be joking to them, but that shit is racial. It is, but we are the punching bag to yeah. all these guys. Yeah. We yeah. are the guys that, I hate to say that, many people make fun of, like, hey, why don't you just dress up like a Mexican yeah. and sell fruit on the corner? And they yeah. think that's hilarious. It's an honest living. He's doing something. Yeah. Now, again, how would I dress up like a white guy to make white people laugh? Because that's what he's doing. He's a white guy dressing like a Mexican guy, if he is white, trying to make Latinos laugh or Mexican people laugh. I think the closest you could get to, to maybe doing something like that would be like... Um, Fuck. <laughs> to wear some overalls or something. Yeah, or like be rapping in front of a trailer. Know, yeah, have some red hair and or a trailer or like something in Ireland or wearing a kilt or I don't. I right. wouldn't know, bro. I don't. I don't know. And then I don't know what white, what white because you know that's a separation there too. You know, right. some whites are be like, oh no, well they're Jewish or right. they're this or they're right. they're not really the white Aryan or they're this nationality. And you know, I I, I don't want to be the dead horse because I I shared this story before. 
But when YG came out with that one song, what was it called? Loco or something like that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And he dressed up like a mariachi. Yeah, yeah. Man, you'll be surprised how many fucking pendejas. Oh, my God. He loves our culture. Yeah. And I said, really? Really? Okay. And I said this. I love the black culture, too. We love black music, right? Yeah, we yeah. love black movies, correct? We love yeah, black yeah. actors, right? How could I dress black and show the black culture that I love them? That wouldn't be the way to show them. You know what she said? Well, that would be racist. Oh, really? She goes, I get what you're trying to say, but I don't think he's trying to be racist. I said, but okay, I want to appeal to the black people. So how do I dress? How do I act to appeal to them? Hmm. No, you can't do it. That'll be racist. She just, it didn't fucking, it didn't register in her fucking head that this guy was dressing in an all fucking tight mariachi suit, you know, had a quinceanera shit going, got some cholos for hire. Yeah. Cause that's exactly what he did. I know because I had one of the cholos for hire here. You know what first video I seen? Um, was it hit him? Hit him up, Alex? Um, what, what, what was it? Where they're where they're in the club, homie? I think it's a Young Jeezy, um, uh, song. And they're in the club, and they're all. I think he's saying, "Get him up, get him up." And he he's um, he's hitting, he's beating down on the homies, or something like. He's like punking the homies. Somebody in the cop, somebody drop a comment what song it is. But he's punking the homies, and that was the first video I seen before anything where I was like, that would never happen, homie. Yeah. That would never happen, where homies yeah. are going to stand by and, and let other homies get punked like that. Charlie, that would never hey, happen. Hey, homie, homie, I'll hire you for 100 bucks. Let me beat up on you in the that video. That would never happen. Just the same reason why I've been offered um, uh, to be on certain shows to play a cholo. Charlie, I wouldn't, I'm not going to play a fucking cholo for you. Like, what the fuck is that? That's stupid. Troll up a hire. Yeah, it's dumb. And all these homies that do that shit. I know you want to get feria, but damn, homie, the same thing? And a prison cell or fucking yeah. inmate number three, and, and then you come out acting all cholo and shit? Like, come on, homie. Yeah, you're going to be cholo number one, cholo number two, cholo number three. Yeah. Uh, They're bring, mocking us. Can we bring out cholo number three on the set? You know, and, then, and then these guys claim that they are on their, they're on these shows and they just had a cameo. And I'm like, bro, you weren't on these shows now. Oh, yeah, in the club. It was called In the Club. Okay. Not the club by 50. No, wait, it's not in the club, is it? Can't be that. No, it's not in the club. That's not what it was. Okay. Not bad, I'll get it. Check this out, you guys. A lot of people may say you guys are talking down on the raza because these guys take these roles. No, what I'm saying is that we deserve more. That's what I'm saying. We deserve more than just these roles that these guys are getting. A lot of these guys never have leaving roles. They just have like these little extra parts. And let me tell you something. These guys that have been in on these on my platform and were actors, none of them collect royalties, bro. They were work for hire, 250 bucks or 500 bucks. A yastubo. That's it. But meanwhile, you got the other guys collecting royalties off of these movies. Yeah. You got people that invest money, make a song, and sell it to, or at least uh, uh, um, their song gets placed in their movie. They collect royalties yeah. off of that. Certain, but why not the actors? Yeah. Certain people, certain people, and certain ethnicities get certain deals, bro. Yeah. And we're the ones that always get the fucking sh the end of the, sh the shitty end of the stick. Yeah. Like it's fucking stupid. But you know what happens? Let's just say if me and you said no to Hollywood. A thousand people behind us will say yes. Yeah. And that's why it will never change. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, so me personally, like I said, I can't answer that little Moco question because I don't know if he's white. I don't know if he's Mexican or not, bro. Little so. scrappy. That's who it was. That full little scrappy. Okay. So here's another one. Marvelous. Yeah. Hello, Tony Marvelous. Do you guys believe in the Emerald tablets? If so, can you guys share your thoughts on them? I've been coming across videos on this Carson guy, he talks about them. Are you familiar with the Emerald tablets? Yeah, that dude, Billy Carson. I do want to talk about it, honestly, but uh -huh. I, actually, that's a show that I want to do, bro. So okay. I don't want to give a gang of shit on it. But yeah, I do know who you're talking about. That that dude, Carson or whatever, there is truth in what he's saying and some of the stuff that he's saying. But please do not believe everything that he's saying because they mix a lot of lies in that shit. You know, there is truth in it. And I, I have so many people hit me up about that's like the biggest person that they hit. I get the most messages about. Okay. I'm a little familiar. Yeah. Okay. And I will say this. And I looked into it. And according to like Egyptian historians, because supposedly these tablets were found in the, the pyramids of Giza and Egypt. And there's 10 of them from what I've understood. 
There's 10 of them, and they divide them into three sections, okay? Um, there's only one person that claims that he's seen them, and this guy was named Maurice uh, Durio. And this guy wrote a book, I believe, in 1925. He claims that he saw them, read them, and through this guy, uh, Thoth, I guess that's his name, Thoth. Yeah, Thoth. That he gave him the revelation to write this book. So, Alec, if you can bring up that book. Okay, there's a book that I want you guys to see that if you guys want to look into it, supposedly this guy, uh, there it is right there. I can see it right here. What more? To the right, to the bottom, here, neck, right there. Okay. Supposedly, make it a little bit bigger so they can see it, that this is the book that he wrote, and this is the translation of those 10 tablets. Now, once again, I don't want to debunk anything you're going to say because obviously you want to get deeper into it when you share this, mm -hmm. which I believe is would be a good subject. One thing that this guy, uh, Carson, I, I, I think that's his last name. Uh -huh. He'll even admit that they don't exist. Like nobody knows where they're at. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's all I'm going to say. So when this guy wrote this book, he provided no proof where he got this info from uh -huh. other than marvelous. I saw them. Yeah. But if you tell me, well, show me, give me some type of yeah. proof. Look it up here, here, or here. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. So that's all I'm saying. So these tablets, I don't want to get into it because they supposedly say, uh, at least on one thing, they mentioned that you could turn anything into gold uh -huh. or anything into like something valuable. Right. So that's as far as I know. Yeah. But I, I mean, I want to speak on it, bro, but I'm going to get into it. Okay. So I don't want to do that. Okay, you know? that's fine. That's but fine. yeah, you, uh, don't, believe, don't believe everything. You know, like I tell you, don't believe me neither. Go look it yeah. up. Go look it up. If you need information, hit me up. I got you. I'll send you whatever I know. Okay. So once again, I forgot that guy's name, Carson. You guys can um, Billy Carson. look up that, that name of that book, okay, or the Emerald Tablets on YouTube, and that guy will pop up. Okay. He's like infatuated with Inky and then Leo and all that. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Question comes after watching some World War II documentaries and current conflicts overseas. <clears throat> if World War III happens, and let's say U.S. doesn't have enough enlisted soldiers, and they ask you to go to war, would you guys go? I don't even know if they'll even accept a guy my age anymore. No, I think the cutoff limit is what? No, you know what? The cutoff limit is, I think, it's like in the 40s, bro. I think it's 40. 40 something okay well i'm but, about yeah, to be 56 oh, okay yeah i don't know i mean you're still in shape look if i was single bro like and i didn't have no children uh -huh. if i you know like let's just say hypothetically that um i have a family yeah. and i'm you know i have a wife uh -huh. and everything's good of uh -huh. course i'm not gonna leave yeah if i'm a single man yeah and i have no kids yeah yeah, yeah i'm gonna go so if they try to recruit your boys are you gonna what are you gonna tell them well, if there's a draft... I know there's going to be one. Okay, if there's a draft, do I really have a choice? Yeah. Okay, what's the choice that I have? The choice is to tell them to do the right thing. Or, uh, I mean, if not, they do issue a warrant. Yeah, you do go to jail yeah, for that. Yeah, I know. Muhammad Ali went to jail. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that's my thing. It's like, but like me, I, I would go, honestly, Marvelous, if I had nobody here. I have grandkids. Yeah, but you're going to go. You know? Say you're going to go, right? You, they, right. They, they draft you or whatever, and now you're out there on the battlefield. Wherever they're going to put you, right? They say the next war is going to be with Russia and China, and you're going to be in the front lines, you know? Oh, I'm done. Yeah, but, but what are you fighting for, though? No, you're right. You're right. Like, what are you fighting for? I'm fighting while I'm fighting and getting my legs blown off while fucking, you know, Biden is playing golf. And who's over here protecting your family? Nobody. Nobody, homie. Nobody, but, but, but that's it's my like thing. All the like, homies. It's like all the homies. Imagine all the homies that are busted right now. Imagine if they all just got released. Imagine if we really won a war and they just did a mass fucking release of inmates, which is going to come too. I know. Right. It's going to come. There's going to be a mass release of inmates, bro. Like, can, can you go knowing that you have children here, bro? Nah. No. I, and I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go. Yeah. I was only pumped up to go when I was when I turned eighteen, and that was just to get out of the barrio. Like, dang, you know, yeah. I'm tired of getting busted. I think if there is a war that includes us, uh, like a World War Three 
Yeah. I think that's going to be, that's, that's the war, that's the last war, bro. I think that's going to be the war of Armageddon. Well, I think the war of, of Babylon is right here because this is Babylon. It's going to be at our doorstep, bro. That is definitely going to be at our doorstep. Yeah. We're going into another lockdown. Look at all the military personnel around here. The internet's getting fucked up. All the banks are shutting down. People aren't even getting their fatty off on the banks. Chase Bank is having so many issues with their shit. Chase Bank is never, I, I, I'm not. All the immigrants coming at the borders. Not the Raza. Right. They're all Asian. And I'm and, glad you said that. they're from the that. Sudan. Like, they're from different countries, homie. And these are all men. Military age men. They're not women. There ain't no women and children at the border. There's a gang of men that are my kids' age. I tell my kids all the time, hey, mijo, look at all these vatos that are coming right here. They're all coming right here. A gang of them. They're getting ready for something. Now, let me ask you this. Well, not, it's not a question. I'm glad you brought that up because whenever we say the border, whenever we say immigrants, everybody's ignorance always thinks too. Why are you talking about Me Mexican? Why are you talking about raza? Yeah. And it's not true, bro. Everybody's coming in. Yeah. And, Everybody. And it's the stupidest thing too for them to say, you know, the majority of people that come over here or across the border is raza. No, it's fucking not. It never has been. You think the raza down there is fucking really trying to come to America for a better way of life? No. They only come over here because the currency is way higher. That's it. And to help the families down there. That's it. Yeah. The currency. That's it. If not, you think they're going to want to cross the border to come over here to this fucking bullshit over here? Right. The fake ass food. All that. They fake got farmland over there. <laughs> you know what I mean? They got land. They grow real food over there. Everything's organic. Yeah. I mean, majority over here, the majority of our shit comes from the Salinas Valley, which they yeah. water the crops with fluoride and atrazine. That's the two worst fucking things you could put in your body. One of them is fucking up your pineal gland where you're, you could focus, say, where your electromagnetic currency comes, where your current comes from. And the other one, atrazine, is fucking up your hormonal desires. That's the truth. It's taking away your, 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 um, your testosterone. And women is taking away their estrogen, making them more manly and uh, dudes more like a female. Now look at everybody, all these bottles walking around acting like, oh, he went that way. Like, come on. Ain't that the damn you truth? Know? On fucking, you know, Blue Dildo doing reaction videos. Come on, homie. Not what me. happened to the real men? What happened to the real men, Tony? We're, what happened? That shit sucks. It's like where we've been time warped, bro. True. You, well, you know what it is? Uh, a lot of, let's be honest, a lot of dudes have allowed it, bro. Have allowed it. And there's very few people speaking up about it. You know, a lot, a lot of women, I've had women that have told me or stuff that I've seen that have, they've said, the reason why we step up is because these guys take the back seat. They don't lead. And a lot of these men are losing their masculinity, bro. Why? I don't know. You know, I don't know. Maybe they're just, you know, some gay ass betas. I don't know, bro. But man's masculinity is being stripped away. And, it's, and a lot of it's starting off with the way they fucking dress, you know? Um... I can go a little bit more into it, but I care not to because I've seen men that I know look at another man and say, oh, shit, I thought I was a bitch. He looked good. I know youngsters, bro, like, like, like say, from the neighborhoods and shit, right? I, I tattoo a lot of youngsters, right, that, that are from different bottles and shit, and they're men. Yeah. Like, I know, I know that the way they conduct themselves, you know, they're men. I, they're still men out there, you know, but they're homies. They're surrounded by homies that are, the majority of them are act like hyenas, man. Like, they're over there fussing and fighting and gossiping and like, dang, homie, we weren't like that. We weren't like that. Oh, oh you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go beat them up. I'm going to fuck them up, homie. Like, we didn't talk about what we were going to do. No, we just want to go do it. Like, no, you don't. You don't. You and don't these guys are trapped because they want, they want to enjoy the, the feeling of having camaradas around them, having good homies around them. They want that to be embraced by somebody, but they're being embraced by the wrong people yeah the wrong homies fuck okay let's go to the next one this one's a good one right here let's see and i mean because we can go on and on and on about that you know other than the food that you talked about on how it's taking mass testosterone away you know um what else do you think is stripping away man's masculinity i know we could talk about clothes the, the um the rising of 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 um of women that that feel they they have the need to or they they need to take the lead to wear the pants in the relationship, and don't know how to conduct themselves like a woman, and no disrespect. And, and if you're speaking out, oh, he's talking about you know, then that is you, that's you. 
You're yeah. speaking out of turn. You need to have respect from your from your man. You know? It's yeah. like I could be talking to you in the car the whole time and you didn't hear a damn thing I said. <laughs> like, come on, that that's fucked up. Right. Like, you know, I, I don't know. It, it's just women that you they 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 they're competing with other women and they're not they're not being what they were supposed to be put here to be a good wife a, a good partner you know right the, right the, the male the male is the alpha you know we're the protector the provider you know you're you're to to help him provide you know yeah not to take leadership and, and i'm gonna take orders from you and it's not even about giving orders it's just about i'm a man i'm here right. you should respect me as yeah. that you know, don't talk to me out of turn or or nothing, nothing like that. Or you know, all these all these women, they they put out this fantasy. Like not all of them, but you know, a good majority of them. You look at the social media, and, and they're they have this fantasy, like they're traveling places, and yeah. they all have this body, and they all look the same, wearing the same fucking makeup, and yeah. dressing the same, and everybody's showing their bodies, but they want a good man. No, how, it's true. How does that work? How do you want a good man? And then they, and then they and then the worst thing to hear from a woman is that. Oh, you're not a real man. I need a real man. How in the fuck do you know what a real man is? Yeah. You don't know. You're, uh, no woman in this fucking world, in this earth, will ever know what a real man is. Only men know what a real man is. We know what, what a real... They don't deal with what we deal with. Having to go out there and, and deal with other men that are trying to be a real man. Yeah. Trying to take our win from us. Right. They don't know how to deal with that. They don't know how, how it is to go out there and, and have to worry about our lives, if, you know, in the, in the barrio and providing for a whole fucking family unit. Yeah. They don't know. They don't do all that. We're the builders, the arch architects. You know, we push it together for you. Yeah, absolutely. Not for you to belittle us, you know? Right. So, I mean, it, and it starts with communication, you know, all that shit. You could come from a broken home and still be a good woman. Yeah. You know, don't blame it on daddy wasn't there and all this shit. A lot of them have daddy issues. Yeah. You know, so I yeah. mean, and it goes to the same for men. You know, men are, are very emotional. Why? Because they're being raised with a single mother that women go off emotions. We don't. Yeah, we don't. You're absolutely right. Absolutely. OK, this next question, I really didn't want to talk about it, guys, because <clears throat> it just seems that people use this guy to pick on. I'll just read it, and I think you guys will understand what I'm saying, okay? I just, when it's this, this subject, it's like beating a dead horse. You guys already know where I stand, and we'll find out where Marvelous stands, even though I already know. Question for Marvelous. Would you stop talking to Tony? Oh, God, this is a funny one. Would you stop talking to Tony if he interviewed SPM? Okay, first, let me answer that. I'd stop talking to me if I interviewed <laughs> SPM. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, yeah, I've already said it. I wouldn't interview him, bro. I wouldn't, you know. So, also, would you train Norbies to box hate the world? Anyways, <laughs> let, let, let's stick to, would you stop talking to Tony if he interviewed SPM? If you interviewed SPM? Yeah, like if SPM came here, I told you, I called, hey, I got SPM coming next week. So, I'd be like, good luck with that one, homie. Yeah, good luck with that one. Seriously. Yeah. Good luck with that one. It was the same thing when I had an opportunity to interview uh, uh, este, uh, uh, Takashi 6 9 Okay. You know, and I just said, no, bro, uh. no, no. I had guys that like, bro, why not? That, your numbers. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else probably would. Uh -huh. Well, I have nothing to do with them. I have nothing. But I do want to talk about something, okay? And then the question after is somewhat similar. Yeah, yeah. But um, I do want to say something marvelous. And I said it before. Okay, I wouldn't interview SPM. I don't care about his music. Mm -hmm. I don't really care no, no, nothing about the guy. The guy was found guilty. It is what it is. Yeah. Okay, and that's it. But throughout the years, you've had people like Geraldo Rivera, uh -huh. who's Puerto Rican. You've had people like um, David Letterman, who's Jewish. Uh -huh. You've had people like fucking either uh, Jerry Springer or <clears throat> Maury Povich or uh, a, a bunch of... And a bunch of other journalists that I may not know by name, Connie Chung or whatever. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But let's just say that one of them interviewed SPM. Yeah. Do you think those people would get phone calls? You're a fucking chomo supporter, you fucking whore. Yeah. You're fucking no good in my body. No. Yeah. They wouldn't. Who's going to call Larry King if he interviews SPM and threaten him? Nobody is. But if you interviewed him. Yeah. What would they say? They'll talk shit. Yeah. 
The main thing is because, you know, they, you know, people are so infatuated with this whole, you know, um, let's say prison mentality of, you know, being active and being all this gang shit. Right. You know, so that's the, the rules that, you know, the majority of people that are grow up in our barrio, they're living by. But what people misconstrued is that there's a difference between a person that's from a barrio and a regular civilian that lives in the barrio. Right. Those standards aren't, aren't held to them. Like a, a civilian to call the huras on somebody or whatever, that, that's not cool. You don't, you don't call the, you, I mean, that's not cool. You don't call the huras on nobody, but is he going to be held accountable? He shouldn't be because he's a civilian. Now, a gang member, if I were to call the huras and be like, hey, homie, you know, hey, my little homies are riding on the wall. Can you come and get them? Like, yeah, homie, I'm a fucking rat then. You're, I shouldn't do that shit. Right. Why, why would I go do that? You know, right. but I mean, it's just people have a, uh, they're holding everybody to the same standard. They do. It's not, it's not cool. And look, let's be honest. There's people that have told me this. Well, you're a civilian, you're a resident, you know, and I'm going to say this, I'm going to say it respectfully, Marvelous. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be hard. Yeah, yeah. But me, if that's what I am, a civilian or a resident, guess what? Resident civilians fight back and we shoot back, bro. Mm -hmm. okay. Anybody could kill anybody. Yeah. So my, my thing is this, that when I mentioned this to one of my boys, I said, hey, man, this guy hit me up about Tekashi 6 9 which was about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And he just told me, no, you shouldn't, bro. You know the rules. And I said, you're the first guy that told me I was a civilian and a resident. And now you're telling me you're applying the rules to me. Not, not even that I even considered interviewing that jackass. But yeah. anyways, let's just move on <laughs> for that. Because I, I don't really give a shit about answering that question. But I do think this question is a little different. Let's see. What is it? I do think it's a little different from all the traditional SPM questions. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And please, let's just be the last one. Que question for Marvelous. Yeah. What do you think about SPM number one? I think we already know what you think. Do you think it's okay to ignore his charges and listen to his music? Do I think it's okay to, to what? Again? Ignore, to ignore his it? charges. You should never ignore those charges. And listen to his music. Let me give an example. Okay. Hey, man, is that his PM? Yeah. But you know, you know what he was convicted of? Yeah, I don't care about that. I just like his music. Yeah. That's what he's asking. Yeah. Okay. So here's my, here's my point of view, bro. When we're grow when we're growing up, we have we listen to R. Kelly, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's R and B music. I mean, I'm sure the majority of men in our in our fucking generation made love to fucking a girl with that music playing. Yeah. So we're gonna have memories about that, right? But now here comes the old boy that got a case. Now he has a case on him and the charges or whatever. Yeah, he's a foul ass dude. But that song. Or whatever, or any of the majority of those songs, we have memories of those songs. It's not like I'm going to bump it every fucking day. And, and SBM, too. It's not like I'm bumping that shit every day. And it's not like I even bump it now. But I do have memories to SBM songs. You know? If, if the Vato is out, it's not like I'm going to kick it with him. He's probably going to get hurt. But, you know, we have memory. How can you stop a person's mind, like, from having a memory right. of that? Or, you know, it, what if his daughter came in? Hey, Dad, you heard this song? Like, okay, yeah, this is a song by this Vato. Screw, uh, school her on, um, you know, what the fuck he did or whatever. Right. But I don't think people should be held accountable as to, like, oh, because a person's listening to that song, now that person's a rapist or that person right. did something to somebody. Like, or he's a chomo supporter. Or he's a chomo supporter. I don't believe that. You know, like, just the whole, you know, the, um, what's her name that got, you know, in a fight or got whatever with the other uh girl whatever the, the, oh, the, 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 the one that got jumped oh uh, jenny six nine yeah yeah her look at all that shit like what does she have to do with anything like she's making music like it and right. the and the homie you know the tattoo the tattoo artist like right. what does he have to do he just showed up to do a music video so why why would you be mad at them right you know what i mean the bottle's gonna be out in a year supposedly oh, okay, okay let me give you a hypothetical scenario I do an episode where I have SPM's paperwork. Uh -huh. And I just say, this motherfucker shouldn't even be alive. Uh -huh. he, you know, he's a chomo and yeah. he has prior allegations and I go, yeah. I go hard on him. Yeah, you're raising your hand then. You should take care of that. Okay, so now, <laughs> now you tell me, Tony, let's go to lunch. Serio? Let's go to lunch. You, you uh -huh. ask me, let's go to lunch. Yeah, yeah. And then I pull up in my rampla, yeah. bumping SPM. Uh -huh. <laughs> what would you think of me? I think you're like no no disrespect to you. I think you're a big old lame, homie. Like 
You ain't kicking it with me. That's just some dumb ass shit. I think everybody, I've had so many people talk shit about other people. I'm like, dang, homie, you should really go call that Vato right now. And you should. Like, hey, I'll take you. I'll go. I'll make sure he don't put, I'll take my strap, homie. Like, you know, or I'll go find somebody that has a strap or something, right. you know, just because uh, those feelings, you know, and that's the right. way it is. And, you know, in jail, you want to be living up to all these jail terms, like all these homies, you know, yeah. they're, they're active out here and they're putting in work, feed them, man. Right. You know, they should know better when you get busted and you and you say something like that. Or I'm gonna go do that. You just raised your hand, and you have to take care of that now. You just raised your hand. Yeah, it's the same thing. You're raising your hand of what you're gonna do, or oh, this person could catch these hands. And I'll, okay, you just raised your hand. You better make sure you do that. That high note that you're talking in front of, pillow talking at your pad, talking about all those vatos you used to beat up, or I'll fuck up that fool, babe. You don't got nothing on me. Hey, back in the day, you don't know. Hey, shh, right here, Ray, I had the guns right here. Gang, hey. gang. Yeah, gang, gang. All that shit. But when they're right here at the mall and you run into them and shit, shh. Hey, what's up, homie? What's up, homie? Oh, I know your homeboy, dog. Like, yeah. Keep that energy, homie. <laughs> keep that energy. Why you, you know, you're the raising The frequency went low. Yeah. Why are you going to do all that? No, you're right. Okay, look at Confession. Big time R. Kelly fan. Step mm -hmm. in the name of love. That, yeah. The guy could fucking sing, okay? Yeah. I'm going to tell you what made me lose a lot of respect even before he got convicted. One of his security guards or his bodyguards came forward and did a, a show or an interview on Vlad. Because uh -huh. they all fucking do that. All of these guys come out. He did Because I guess R. Kelly fired him or whatever. And so he decided to come clean on R. Kelly before R. Kelly was convicted. So he said this, in the studio, R. Kelly was a fucking genius. That's what he said. He was a fucking genius. He's an amazing man. He said when he stepped out of the studio, he said um, he was like a 15-year-old boy. So Vlad asked him, okay, so that kind of makes sense. He liked 15-year-old, 14-year-old girls. Do you think maybe it was because his mentality was so young? That that's why he liked young girls. That's what Vlad was saying. That guy was like, yeah, probably. I don't know. Yeah. And I was like, no. 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 So then somebody calls me up. And again, they said this. Hey, did you watch that interview? And I was like, yeah. He goes, do you think maybe that's why SPM? You know, because he was a genius in the studio. Uh -huh. But outside, maybe his mentality was so young. He can, uh, um, how, he has so much in common with these young chicks. No, there is nothing in common yeah, to have. I was like, no, bro. I mean, what are you going to talk about? What are you going to talk to them about? Brat dolls? You know, what are you going to talk to them? There's. Yeah, I don't know, man. Those people should all be put on a fucking island and castrated. Yeah. My thing is this, that if somebody, like he said, is going to raise their hand and talk all that masa about a certain individual, whether it's SPM or whether it's uh, R. Kelly or whatever, if you're going to be saying that, you shouldn't go around saying that this artist is your top five artist and that's who you bump. And I'm like, bro, like, what the <laughs> fuck? You just totally, like, backtracked. Yeah. So, anyways, please, honestly, from here on out, um, I don't want to ask or any more SPM questions because we're beating a fucking dead horse. The guy was convicted unanimously. It is what it is. He's, done, he's doing his 20-something years. If he gets yeah. out, cool, he gets out. I heard he's up for parole in October. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to get out or not. And honestly, I really don't care. Yeah. But I'm not going to continue to give just... That, give that energy, homie. Yeah. So, all right, let's move on. Uh, what's your opinion on Wes Watson? He became a millionaire talking prison politics. Are you familiar with... Yeah. Okay, how did he become a millionaire talking prison politics? Um, can, can you tell us who Wes Watson is? I don't know. Um, just some dude that, you know, came out... And, um, so he did time. Yeah, he, yeah, he did time. Um, as far as I know, homies have been busted with them. You know, he did a, a, a good majority of his time out of state. You okay. know, my homies, um, I have a couple of them that were in the same you know, facility as him, but I mean, I don't know. He came out with, uh, you know, very, uh, he, he wasn't as aggressive as he is now, you know? And, um, um I could speak on what I think it, it is that, that, that's, you know, making him act like that, but. Um, he just, I think social media just, you know, it, it, it pumped him up to even be more, more, um, fuck, what do you say? Go a little bit over the top with his videos and shit. So he's just really loud. People like that. He's loud and he portrays himself to be this fucking person that was like a shot caller, you would say. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, truth be told us that's not even the true story, but, oh. but now, you know, there's so many people sponsoring him 
and he's getting paid, you know, off of YouTube and different, you know, sponsor sites that, you know, he's become a millionaire. And, you know, to me, I mean, just, it's a good, it's one thing to make money, whatever, you know, but the stuff that he talks about and the way he comes, um, you know, so I, just the way he's conducting himself on YouTube, it's not good, bro. It's not good for him to be talking about the shit that he's doing. And it's even getting worse. Um, if people have seen the last couple of videos that he's done, um, if you look at him, you could tell that it, it, it's not good. It isn't good. And it's not, I'm not talking about the way he's talking. It's just his, his uh, if you see the video, you'll know what I'm saying. I'm not going to say it. Right. But if you, watch, if you watch his videos, you'll know what I'm talking about off the bat. But um yeah he's become a millionaire and um it's just from the way he's he's um he's portraying himself to be this fucking the super macho man like wow. he he caught shots he did this and that he moved dope he made a gang of feria and you know he's from Oceanside California you know now now I don't know this person so I had to ask you yeah I I don't really care to like comment on him because I don't know but I do want to yeah. ask this as far as when it comes to prison politics. It, is that a smart thing to do, man, no, for views? No, like, nah, he shouldn't be, I mean, enjoy your money. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that I, I don't know I don't know a, a lot about him, but, but what I do know is from what I heard from good homies. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's not cool to be doing that, you know, to, yeah. be, to be out there putting yourself out there, homie, it, if you're going to be representing a flag. There, there's a, a podcaster out there that's getting a lot of views. You've told me about him. Huh. And... Uh, he did a video and somebody sent it to me. I believe you were probably one of them. Yeah, yeah. He did, I think, on four individuals from Isar Wilmas. Okay, I think I know what you're talking about. And I'm thinking, you don't even live around here. Yeah. Who made you the hood journalist to report something from somebody's neighborhood and then go into detail on yeah. what they did? Now, let's just say that's public knowledge and people can look it up. Yeah, yeah. But who are you to go ahead and do that? Nobody. They're dropping. They're just dropping content because the, when they see the once they see those checks coming in, homie, yes. that's it's addicting. Yeah, you know, and they want to keep up. So the more content, the more better. But you know, since uh, the majority of these people have transitioned to the other side, and what I mean, not from not from being an active gang member to not being an active gang member, and now you're free and you're out here and you feel you're free to talk about whatever. Yeah. You got to be careful, homie. Like you're talking about shit that you shouldn't be talking about, and about individuals that you shouldn't be talking about. You know, uh, and don't know the people. Yeah, and don't and don't know them. It doesn't matter if the story's true or whatever it might be. That's just shit. That, that that's the golden rule, homie. Like, if you're out now and you're enjoying your fucking freedom, why would you be trying to taunt people and be like, "Oh, here I am," by yeah. telling a little story? Live your life, have your high now. You got your kids. You're, right. you're, you're still putting your kids in, in, in harm's way, right. and your wife. Yeah, I, I I I'm not gonna give him a plug, but he actually made a video about me a while back. Yeah. And it would be like like me, Marvelous, and I'm giving you a hypothetical scenario. Say you had, it's you, Marvelous, and a guy named Joe, Jack, and Mike. Mm -hmm. Okay, Marvelous, Joe, Jack, and Mike all got busted. They're from Maravilla. Yeah. This guy, Joe, was known to be a snitch. The other guy, Mike, was known to be an informant. And he was dating this girl, and this girl was sleeping with Marvelous behind his back. And he's putting out all their business, yeah, yeah. all pictures. And I'm thinking, bro, like, I almost want to say, bro, you, sp you spoke something into existence that may come back to you. Yeah, that's what they're doing. That's exactly what they're doing. They're speaking all this shit into existence, homie. Look at the last homie that got hit. I know. That sucks, man. Yeah. Damn, with, your, with this familia, you know? But it's like, you got, you got to realize, homie, you're opening that fucking, that wound again. That yeah. wound was, was already healed, bro. Like, you're, you're, you're fucking cutting into that scar again, and all that old shit is going to come out. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Question for Marvelous. This is kind of a lengthy one, so hopefully you can understand it because there's a name in here that I don't know how to pronounce. Okay. Uh, question for Marvelous. If he believes in the most high God, Yahweh, and knows none others should, knows none others should be worshipped alongside him, then why does he praise he, is he or it's Oh, he's Lipochili. That one. That is the same. They, see, that's another oh, okay, person. Okay, let me finish. Okay, and you My can bad. elaborate. And the other Mexica deities so much. 
Isn't that contradicting and isn't he digging his own hole deeper and deeper, not entering the kingdom of the Most High? Saludos from Big Chuco, 915, home and founder of the Zoot Suiters and Pachucos. Founders of the Zoot Suiters and Pachucos. Right. So that's the question. So to the homie that asked that, all due respect, homie, there, that is the Most High. That is those stories, like I keep saying, I mean, I don't, maybe you haven't heard everything I talk about, but those are our stories. Oh, we sleep, Ochli would be the equivalent of the most high. It's not a separate, it's not a deity like that, okay. like they're like, they make it seem. Okay. Like maybe they, they see kind of like as a, you're seeing it as an idol or something. I don't know. Yeah. So that's what the Spaniards or, or the, the Jesuit priests would try to say that we were, we were, we were um, wow. contacting deities and false gods. And they had literally called the Weasley Postley the devil. Oh, wow. Hey, you want a beer or no? No, no, I'm good, bro. Are you sure? Yeah. It'll keep you warm. Come on, homie. It's a big ass storm. You're really trying to get me to spin out, huh? A little bit. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I decided to buy a 805. Okay. Um, let me see. Question for Marvelous. Uh, how likely is it? This is a pretty good one. Yeah, yeah. How likely is it that we will witness a fake alien invasion? Oh, you're already witnessing it. Okay. It's already happening. Are you talking about the immigrants? No. Like, oh, I'm talking about like the, all the alien crap going on with the okay. spaceships and all that bullshit. Um, elaborate a little bit more. So one thing people should fucking take into consideration is that if there was aliens here, right. they're not going to come and, and, and uh, taunt us or be like, you know, show a little bit here. They're, they're either going to come to stay or they're not. Like, think about it. There's no, there's no visiting and all this and that. Like, that's Studying all government. Cows. Yeah, that's all government shit. They don't need to study it. They're going to come and study a fucking cow when they have the most highest technology. Like, is it for real? No. Or do imprints on, on wheat fields? Yeah. I mean, come on. That's just ridiculous. You sure you don't want to swig? No, I'm good, homie. Thank you. You know what? You know what tripped me out? This guy right here. I went to his house the last time I was there for the podcast. Uh -huh. And his refrigerator was filled with a bunch of stuff to drink, even beer. <laughs> like, so this is for my clients, man. Oh, okay. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, I got to keep my clients. He had a soda. Yeah, get yourself a root beer. Yeah, yeah. Get your Dr. Pepper. Yeah, get yourself a water. Yeah, yeah there's beer in there, homie. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I'm like, he acts like he doesn't drink. So have you ever drank, though, tattooing somebody? Yeah, I used to. For reals? Yeah, I didn't get fucked up, though, but I would have a drink, you know? All right. Yeah. All right. Alex, are you going to have some of this or you got that cheap shit over there? Okay. He buys that dollar whiskey. Oh, shit. yeah. Yeah. That's that. Oh, you got vodka today? Vodka. Like, oh, shit. I poured me a fucking triple shot. Yeah, that's how I used to love to go buy a watermelon, poke a hole in it, and pour a, a whole bottle of vodka on it. And you put it in the refrigerator. And, and the next day you turn it around, let it soak up, and then you cut it all into squares. And then oh, you play shit. a card game, bam, get a fucking a watermelon shot. Shit. Okay. Okay. So, fake alien invasion. I think his name was Robert Bigelow. Are you familiar with him? Uh, he claims that, that the aliens are already here. He's a billionaire, bro. Oh, right. And he's dedicated, like, his money and his life uh, into... Uh, he says he don't want to make contact because he says they're already here, but into finding out more about them. Yeah. Um, I personally don't believe in real aliens. Uh, I know I've said this before, and people probably mock me i believe they're demons uh -huh. that's just me that disguise themselves as angels of light or something mysterious that causes people to detour from thinking about god okay right. um but i do believe that there will be some type of sort of fake alien invasion especially with all that ai and technology that they can make something look like it's landed and it's really not there, but it looks like it's there, and then just disappear into a hole in the sky. Yeah. And all that was just fake. It, yeah. was proje it was projected. They're, looking, they're using so much Blue Beam right now, it's ridiculous. What, what, what exactly is Blue Beam? I, um, Project Blue Beam is uh, where they have a, a holographic um, or a hologram. It's like a hologram machine. They're able to project anything in the sky. They, they and you can make an angel come down. They can make all that, and they're doing it. Uh, yeah, I, I think somebody sent it to me, and they did it at a, at a game, Yeah, uh, like at a football game. I think it was the Jaguars that they had a Jaguar. Okay, like, let's just say here's the stadium. If we had an aerial view looking down, this yeah. is the stadium. Uh -huh. They had the Jaguar jumping up and over okay, the people. Yeah. Yeah, and I was that. like, holy crap. Crazy, yeah. And then there was another one. I think they said it happened in downtown LA, I believe. 
could be mistaken. The sky opened up. Obviously, it was projected. Something came down and floated there, and they had like a hammer. And then it just went back up, and the sky closed. And I, it looks real. Yeah, I didn't see that one. That's crazy. Though. Yeah, so I believe something like that could happen, and it's pretty much just a strike fear in, into people. So, okay. This is the last one. Um, hell, yeah. I'm always looking forward to Marvelous. Saludos, vatos locos. Okay. Somebody left a comment, but that's what's up. This might be the last one. All right. Feed the people some type of intelligent conversation, not how to make a prison spread or who's the real one or, or not. Yeah. Leave the ignorant teenager shit to other channels. For real. It's true. Look, I don't make fun of people, bro. And I, I don't really care when it comes to people saying, today we're going to do a show how to make a spread. Yeah. First and foremost, I understand that's, that's your thing. Yeah. I don't ever plan to go to prison, bro. I don't ever plan. To, I don't want to know how to make a spread. Yeah. You know, so maybe that's why it doesn't interest me. Yeah. You know, and now they sell spreads in a baggie where people yeah. can buy them. Yeah. There's about those even selling. They have their little table set up and they're sell, They're making ferry out there selling that shit. You, you know, and then there was another guy that sent me how to make a menudo spread, corn nuts and chicharrones <laughs> and the soup from the cup of noodles. And I'm like, bro, like, like, I don't, I'll leave it at that, bro. Yeah. I'll leave it at that because people will probably say I'm dissing. I'm not dissing. I just don't understand and how beneficial was that to someone's young mind that's watching, you know? Cool. The real cool shit became non-existent and the, all the ignorant shit became cool. I remember, I mean, think about it. Back in the 90s, if you were to claim, you know, talk about being caught and all this and that, you get fucked up. Like, you got caught, you fucking been. That's all you bragging about. You know, for an example, and I'm, I'm going to repeat this again. My close friend did 32 years for deleting someone Came out, his first words, and, I, and when I hugged him, because I was one of the last guys to see him leave before he did what he did. And when I saw him, man, I really, really teared up because it's been 30-something years since I've seen him. Yeah. And he just told me, I don't ever want to talk about it, Tony. He just I just don't ever want to talk about it. So I understand it takes a certain individual to, to say that and live like that. Yeah. But today you have grown men that see the opportunity of like, fuck, all I got to do is tell my story and I get popular. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll do it. It's almost like they, they're they're matching a younger man's maturity level and almost trying to keep up with them because growing up, I think the most tattoos I seen on a man's face was their eye. Yeah. Okay. Maybe the side of their neck or right here. Yeah. Right right here. The oldest one that I saw was always in cursive and they would say like Wilmas. Yeah. And then right here it'll say like fucking, you know, Chango or whatever. Yeah. Then maybe it, and that's as far as it would go. So today I saw a guy, I'll be honest, I didn't know what it was. Uh -huh. He had his eyes painted, his nose painted. He looked like a panda. Yeah. And he was he was probably like close to the 70s. I'm thinking, I know he's from here, but why now? Yeah. I get a lot of youngsters that come and get tatted and shit. And the, and the, you know, when if I haven't, if they haven't seen me and we're barely meeting, they'll be like, damn, homie, that's right. You're all blasted. G, that's what's up, my G. And I'm like, man, you know, I don't want. I'm, I'm planning on taking all this shit off my face and my head, homie. And they're like, nah, for real, you shouldn't. That shit looks gangster. And then I'm like, that's the point, homie. We didn't get this shit to look gangster, fool. Like, that's not why we got that shit. That's why you guys are all getting that shit. You know, we, you don't do that shit. Like, I don't want, what the fuck do I need all this shit on my face and my, my head for? Do, do you have, is there any, <clears throat> I just have to ask it, even though you kind of already shared it. Do you, is there any tattoos that you regret it? Yeah. 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 Do any of these children ever ask you that? Uh, no, I've had my, my daughter um, ask me to take off my tattoos when she was younger, and, and that I, that made me step back and like, dang, you know, she's little, but she she understands this shit, you know? She goes, it looks, it looks ugly, Dad, you know? And she goes, I want you to look nice, nice. Yeah, and like, damn, yeah, because know? this is a soul. This is someone that... Not only came out of her mother, but also of yeah, you, you know. Yeah, pure spirit, bro. And I, and I have to take, you know, she has some good advice for me. I should listen to her. Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, do, have, do any of your children have tattoos or have you tattooed any of them? Yeah, they have tattoos. Some of them. Okay. Yeah. And you tattooed them? Um, I've tattooed two of my boys. Okay. Yeah. Do you ever give them, like, consejo, like, tell them, like, mijo, I'll do this, but don't go overboard or anything like that? Well, the, what I did on my on two of my boys was just my grandfather's name. He meant a lot to him. Okay. He, he um he was he was always there for them. But um, 
I just tell them, you know, be careful. I know you're going to go get other tattoos, you know. Right. Um, if you ever need advice, you know, I'm right here, mijo. But just make sure that if you do whatever you get, make sure it, account, it counts for something, you know. Don't just get random shit or just because or because that vato looks cool with it, you want it. Make sure everything, if it's going to be earned, make sure you do earn it. And, you know, just make sure you know what you're getting. Don't look like all these fucking people with random ass tattoos here and there and all little you know, don't mean nothing. A fucking dollar symbol. Yeah. Another person getting a tattoo of the president that was a pedophile. <laughs> Another person walking around with um, a picture of who they think is Jesus, but it's really Caesar Bourget, a pedophile. Yeah. You know, like all this shit. People walking around with all this shit and they don't know. You know, walking around with the all scene, I had no idea, you know, what it means or what it stands for. All this symbolism. Yeah. You know, they don't have no idea what they're getting. You know, I, I, I've met a lot of your children and a lot of them. Bro, have your exact same face, okay? Uh, <laughs> so my question to you is, when it came to your mother, to your father, whose looks did you take from? Do you look like both of them, or do you, did you, do you, do you yeah. have your father's both face? Both of them, bro. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's crazy, man. Because when I saw your daughter, Heaven, and I saw your sons, and I'm like, wow, they all look just like oh, yeah, you, bro. Yeah, yeah. So that's crazy. Okay, Alex, we're going to go ahead and uh, um, uh, connect, and... We're going to go ahead and get this party started. Get the party started, Roy. Okay, am I connected? Okay. Let's see right here. Look at you guys. I'm going to open up the phone lines, and you guys just call in. Don't send me no DMs tomorrow and saying, Tony, how can you answer my motherfucking... Bro, I'm not going to put up with that shit, bro. Call in, okay? I had this one guy that just... You're a fucking liar, Tony. You're a fuck... Bro, call in right now, dude. Okay? So let's see. Okay, let me see. Okay. All right, caller. Let's see. Can you hear both ears? Um, On yours? A little. You need to turn it up a little bit, bro. Okay. You Alex, can. can you turn me up a little? Por favor. Okay, there caller, you your name right or where are you calling from? Tony A. Caesar from Paris. Caesar from Paris. How you doing, my bro? We're doing excellent. Excellent, excellent. Today, hello, Marvis. How you doing? Hey, how you doing, bro? How you doing, man? <clears throat> We're good, we're good, we're good. Other than the 49ers getting ready to win the Super Bowl, uh, we're doing great. <laughs> yeah. You think <clears> so? I don't hear nothing from Tony. I don't hear nothing from Tony. So your silence, Ooh. I'll take it as, uh, as appreciation. Thank you, Tony, very I, much. I, I take, take it that I plead the fifth. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get things started here. I got a bunch of notes here. Uh, we'll talk about just the last subject you guys were, were talking about. I can't express to you how many times I've called in to uh, share to the people, share to everybody out here, especially the youngsters, about prison life, you know? Talking about prison, back in my day, I'm born in 75. I'm 48 now. Talking about prison back then was taboo. You know what I mean? Uh, expressing what your tattoos meant was taboo. Prison... Politics were made especially for prison life, not for society. There should be nobody out here checking paperwork. Mm. We live in a free society where you live, where you have neighbors that are different, different colors, different creeds, different genres. Nowadays, different transmissions. We got seven speeds out here, eight speeds, but we, we, and that's why we're out here and not in there where those rules have to apply because they're in with other criminals. There's no other way to live with other criminals. Let's stop with the prison. It's not cool to be in prison. It's not cool to have paperwork. Okay, you want to bump SPM, but like Marvel just said, we, we have money with pedophiles on them, and we pay to get what we need out of pedophile pictures. That did the same thing out of saying, I bump Rick James. Rick James, didn't Rick James get in trouble for locking up some girl all cracked out? But I love his music. So what, am I going to get DP though? Am I going to get DP'd because I'm a fan of the 70s show and that curly head of fuck did what he did with those girls? Now, I'm going to get DP'd because I, for years, for years, I paid this guy's pocket watching his shows. It's funny. They're great. Those rules apply for prison, not for society. Everybody wake up. True. You got me all over the place, Tony. And, and you know what? And by the way, Miss Pac-Man wipes back to front. All right, let's get back to this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to this. God, God, you got me all over the place. Catholicism. I'm sorry to take so much time, but this has been a great podcast. Catholicism. I wish so bad that I was able to grow up 
with a religion, no matter what it was, as long as it was a faith. What fucked it up for me was having priest stick in my mouth at a young age. That's religion. That's another story. We're going to hell in the handbasket. Anything. You know, uh, let's touch on reparations. I believe that reparations should be not to go through what our past elders have suffered through. That's what reparations should be. Not money, not, not you know, anything else. It should be how we evolve as a society, as men. Reparations stand for not going for what our fathers and our grandparents went through. Period. Keep, uh, keep going, you got me all over. I, I, I got to keep it. I'll keep on going. Billy Carson. Everybody, Billy Carson, that, that man, so overwhelming. Great stuff. Great stuff. I want to touch on another thing. Marvelous. What do you think about the moon being solid or being plasma? Have you heard of that? Plasma. I always say it, bro. Plasma. Exactly. 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 That's great. Now, I want to, uh, a little plug for, uh, it is called Vibes of the Cosmos. Great stuff. A YouTube channel. It'll explain everything about the moon. Let's talk about the three soldiers that died. I believe it was in one building. And what do we do as a country? We go and bomb over a hundred spots and kill how many thousands of people? What are we trying to start here, Tony? You know, what are we trying to provoke here? Yeah. It's crazy. No, yeah. you're right. And, and all these uh, YouTubers, yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's another thing. That's a whole other show because World War Three is coming, buddy. And we're the ones that's going to start the shit, and we're going to eat the shit. We're starting <laughs> shit out there, killing innocent people, dude. Yeah. You oh. know, it, it is what it is, and it's war. And war means there's casualties. Yeah. Absolutely, bro. Now, let's, let's get to these crazy. Let's get to this little moco guy that likes to paint fucking teardrops in his face. That if he really knew the real definition of a teardrop in his face, he would fucking absolutely shit his fucking pants. Let's get that started. YouTube, like the exhibit says, these motherfuckers will do anything like eat a shit sandwich for internet likes. God damn it. I'm beginning to stutter. She's from Paris and I'm out. Damn. <laughs> he talked about a shit sandwich. Shit. Okay. Whole shit uh, Call her your name or where are you calling from? Yes, yeah, this is Chris from Arizona. Um, I seen in the title that um you guys had the lottery on there like did you guys already talk about that or what were you guys going to talk about on there no it was a question i put lottery up there because somebody asked a question tony or marvelous if you guys were to win the lottery uh would it change you for the better or for worse would it break up marriages relationships friendships etc so and oh, okay I, and, and I also i think that you got the good the good fellas um uh the henry hill left in, in the in the little soundbite thing, that's, that's so right. I was gonna ask you a question. You guys, see, you guys seen the Goodfellas movie, right? Both of you guys, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask, uh, what was your favorite, like, funniest uh, scene out of that whole movie? Mine was uh, when Joe Pesci, after he uh, asked uh, Henry Hill, like, "How am I funny?" and he hit the guy over the head with the bottle, mm -hmm. and then the waiter was just standing there looking at him, and Joe Pesci goes, "What the fuck are you looking at?" Yeah. <laughs> he throws some it's shit at him. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right. I'm here to amuse you. Huh? What was you? What was you, uh, marvelous and Tony's favorite part or funniest part of that movie? Believe it or not, well, not funny, but I'll, I'll give you a serious one and a funny one. Mm -hmm. Okay. When all right, that dude, uh, este, I'm gonna call him Ray Liotta. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Drives his girl to her house, and when the neighbor across the street tried to get like freaky with her. Yeah. And he went over there with a the fucking gun and busted his fucking mouth open, bro, in front of all his fucking homies. What was she doing kicking it with them? I yeah. have no idea. But you're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. Supposedly, he tried to come on to her and he said no. And then he tried to come on to her and he said no. And then he got disrespectful. She called up you know, her man and he went over there and fucked her, fucked her up. Mm -hmm. But my other one was when Robert De Niro, uh, Mo uh, was it Marty's Wigs? Oh, yeah. Remember when Ray Liotta goes, yeah, just Marty give me his fucking money. Yeah, give me his fucking money. money. Fuck him. Fuck him. <laughs> okay. Fuck him in the ear. Yeah. Fuck him in the other ear. Hey, bro, but <laughs> let me tell you something about Marty. And there's a lot of people like this in the neighborhood. Marty goes, come on. You know, I could have snitched. I could have dropped time. I could have dropped time. Why, why are you fucking like, 
Like how we trying to blackmail somebody and say, I could have dropped dime, I could have snitched. Yeah. And Robert De Niro grabs his ass, starts choking, and Ray Liotta starts laughing, bro. Instead of be like, stop. No, he's laughing. That shit was classic, bro. Yeah. That shit was rest in peace, Ray yeah. Liotta. Yeah. So Yeah, rest in peace. Mm-hmm. What about you, bro? Anything? Man, I have so many favorite parts, bro. I I can't it's hard to pick out just one. Um but I like, I guess, when they're when they they're murdering that dude or they killed him already. He's in the trunk and they go to the mom's pad to go eat. Yeah. And then they're looking at oh, the, yeah. they're looking at the picture of the dog and shit. And he goes, "Hey, yeah. I like that picture. One dog goes one way, and when the other dog goes the other way, what are you gonna do about goes, it?" Yeah, he goes, <laughs> and he look he looks like somebody. Yeah, and the old man's looking at me like, "What do you want?" Huh? Yeah, yeah, I like that part, bro. Let's be honest. When that movie fucking hey, started, hey, one, one, hey, one thing for for go ahead, bro. What, hey, what hey, happened? No, let me finish one one last thing. The way that movie fucking started though. Mm-hmm. When they open up the fucking trunk, uh-huh. bah, 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 and, mm-hmm. and he fucking stab his ass. Yeah. And when he slams the trunk, as far as back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. That was fucking classic, Epic right there, bro. Yeah. Fuck, I knew that movie was gonna be good. Right. Hey, okay. and, and for Tony, and for Tony Marvelous, that thing. Uh, if you could only pick one of these shows, like as one of the best shows, well, which one would it be? Twenty Four with uh, Jack Bauer or The Shield? I think that one was like in in, in California. Like it came out in the two thousands. I haven't seen any of them, bro. I haven't seen none of them either, bro. I haven't seen. None oh, of you haven't seen any of them? Nah, no. Man. Damn. You know what I'm watching right now is um the BMF, of Raising Canaan, and um well, I finished Snowfall a while back, but those three shows are they were this yeah. shit. Yeah, Snowfall was a good one too. Yeah. Yeah, hey bro. If yeah. you have, I, I, again, I'm just saying it because I truly enjoyed it. If you haven't seen Godfather of Harlem, I recommend that, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna check that out. It's on Amazon. Yeah, I seen the first season. That was pretty. That's a pretty good show. I liked it, bro. Anyways, my bro, thank you for calling in, bro. I greatly appreciate you being a part of the show. Yeah, homie. You have a good night, bro. Uh, all right, guys. Have a good one. Peace. All right. Yeah, that shit was fucking hilarious, bro. Mm-hmm. I love that fucking movie. And then the fuck, and then the the music. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's just it's just awesome, bro. So. Okay, you guys, we got time. You guys want to call in? Ask me a question. Ask Marvelous a question about our conversation or whatever. Uh, just go ahead and call in. Call in your name or where are you calling from? Hello. Oh, God. Here we go. Go ahead, bro. You guys want to come over and take some pictures? Okay, yeah, okay. Next caller. <laughs> like, okay, cool. <laughs> At least, you know, I gave you a one for effort. Okay, so. Motherfuckers over here. You know what? And the ne- next call like that, I am going to put their number out there. Yeah. So. But I, I'm not gonna do that. So, anyways, let's go, guys. Let's get a call in, and uh, let's see. Here we go. Call her your name, or where are you calling from? What up, Tony? What up, marvelous? Snowman. Snowman. How you guys doing tonight? What up, bro? Too much. Hey, less I wanted snow to, one. Yeah, I want to just uh, shout out a few topics. If you guys like video games, Red Dead Redemption Two. It's a Rockstar game. Uh, Great game. You know, you got to lose weight, hunt, fish, oh, all wow. kinds of cool stuff like wait, that. Wait, like wait, a wait, cowboy. Wait, wait, uh, wait, what's it called again? Red, Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption 2. I think I've seen that shit. Okay, that's dope, man. That sounds dope. I like yeah. that. And then another quick topic before I, I move on to the next one uh, real quick. Uh, D-Boy from Carson. Every time I scroll through Instagram, Man, he's been spending some shit lately. Hey, bro, I just recently saw D Boy again because uh, we work out at the same gym, and uh, um, I'm, I'm gonna bring him back eventually because he's been he's been here twice. But I want to bring back his dad, Cobra from the Booyah Tribe. So I'm trying to, but I was trying to book him for for this month, but he said he's busy this month on the days that I was trying to book him. But I'm definitely going to bring back his dad from the Harbor Area because he's definitely a legend from the once again Booyah Tribe. So much love to Cobra and uh, D Boy. Yeah, yeah, he's been spitting some stuff, and I don't know if you guys seen Patrick Mahomes Sr., his mugshot smiling, his third DWI. I don't know what you guys think about that. Too much money. <laughs> you know who Patrick Mahomes is? No. Uh, he's the quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs. He's on his way to his fourth Super Bowl. Uh, an amazing quarterback. Uh-huh. But his father, you said it's his third DUI? Third DWI. DUI, yeah, yeah, third DWI. Yeah, so so the, the, to me right there, he's just having too much fun with all that money, bro. Um, so, like, 
I really don't know. I mean, is he a mark now that they're just keeping an eye on him because of who he is now? That every time he has a fucking drink a little bit over the limit, they just stop him? You know, could be. I don't know, bro. I, I haven't done enough homework on that, but you know he's going to get out. I don't think he's going to do any prison time. Nah, he's just having fun. It's just like a little slap on the wrist, and he'll be in the Super Bowl with his $12,000 ticket somewhere in the booth, you know? I'm, I mean, look. Smoking just, his fancy cigars. Look, you know what? With that kind of money, bro, you should have a damn chauffeur, bro. You know, you, you shouldn't be driving around. You know, you're you're a mark, bro. What I mean by you're a mark, people can say, that's his dad. He likes to drink. Let's fucking follow him. Let's get him ticket. And then post him all over the fucking social media. Right in time for the Super Bowl. You know, now, does that get in his son's yeah. head? Possibly. I, I, is that a kind of like, uh, is that a way to get his son off the game? Probably. Even though I still, I still think KC's going to win, but that's a different story. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And Marvelous, the uh, uh, song you were looking for, the video, 2004, Mob Deep Twisted with Machete, uh, Triggs uh, that passed away. I think that's the video you were referring to. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know it was that dude, Little Scrappy. That was, that was who was rapping in it. Okay. Yeah, appreciate that, homie. Got it. All right. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, Tony, I wanted to mention uh, Bay Recon. Uh, the rappers from Vallejo, Modesto area up north. I'm um, cool with Little Fetty, and he, you know he's trying to get the uh, blessing. You know, so anytime you know he let me know that uh, he's ready for uh, you know to come on Rodem Radio. Okay, you know what? You follow me on Instagram, right? Yes, sir. Hit me on there, bro. Let's make that connection. Let's make it work. All right, all right. You guys have a good night. All right, Snowman. You have too, a blessed one, homie. Okay, let's keep it going. We got about 10 more minutes. Whoever wants to give a call, question, comment, complain. 2024, happy new year. Let's go. We've already going through one more, one month. We got 11 more months. 11 more months. Call your name or where are you calling from? Tucson. Tucson, what's good, bro? What's your name? Fernando. What's good, Fernando? You got a question? Yeah, hey. Uh, now, this is the first time I've been on there, you know? So, fucking, uh, it was dope to see both you guys. But uh, what's the strangest story that you've seen in the hood? What's the what? Freaky tale shit. Oh, freaky tale shit. Strangest. Strangest story. Well, you know, like a tweaker or something, you know. Well, that's growing up. You always see those Sherm heads, bro, pissing all over themselves. And then when the cops fucking come, they turn around looking like zombies. But um, other than that, bro, just seeing shadow people, different shapes and different sizes. As weird as they may sound, some of them look like midgets, small. Some look uh, like tall, like men. Some look like, like a Bigfoot, like a big gorilla. Uh, shadow like a like a it looks like a black mist but this black is darker than the dark that was in the park it's just darker bro and i feel sh- you you know yeah what about you marvelous um i don't know i i don't think i've seen stuff strange like that but i just seen like a lot of weird weirdos and shit yeah about it. Not even on Scante, homie. Oh yeah, I mean, I seen people act all weird, weirded out, but nothing to the extreme where it's a good enough story, bro. Just like some tweaker shit. But what's yours? I know you got one. Let me hear it. So I got one. Yeah. Hey, I was all scanted out, fool. I was fucking walking back to my house, <laughs> and I was walking back to my house, homie, and fucking and and the ruka was fucking fighting with her dude and he fucking threw um before I even walked up um he threw this fucking like you know you remember the fucking when you go to Lids and shit the the hat place where you put your hats okay yeah yeah so it was like a fucking yeah and he fucking threw that shit over the fucking fence and I was walking, dog, and I was tweaked the fuck out. 
And I fucking, I was like, what the fuck? And I fucking grabbed it and he was like, hey, fucking yeah, throw it over here. And I threw it over the fence and he was fighting with his lady. And I was fucking on a sick one, homie. For real. <laughs> All good, my brother. Thank you for calling in, being a part of the show and letting us know your your hood tales. That's what we call it. Freaky hood tales. All right, well, I watch this show all the time, dog. I'm not going to be hood tales. I'm going to be, uh, I'll, I'll call in on the freaky tales, too. All good, my brother. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Have a good night, homie. Okay, let's go. Uh, we got a couple of more minutes. Whoever wants to call in, call your name or where are you calling from? Caller. Hello. Yep. Yes. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing tonight? Good, my brother. Good evening, Tony A. Good evening, Marvelous. Good evening, homie. Where are you calling from, my bro? Former SD, currently residing in Colorado. Colorado. What part of Colorado, if you don't mind me asking? Peyton, east of Colorado Springs. What was that? Colorado Springs. Oh, okay. Hey. All good. What's, what's good, my brother? You got a question or a comment or complaint? No, I'm just going to give a shout out to you guys. Good show. Thank you, my brother. I uh, appreciate you, Tony. I appreciate you. Uh, marvelous. Great conversations all the time. Thank and you, I'm bro. just going to say, hey, good job, man. Hey, thank you, bro. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for tuning in, bro. I really yeah, no appreciate problem, it. Man. I hope you're having a good night, bro. Yes, sir. Yeah. Peace. Okay, let's go. That's I dope. appreciate those calls. Appreciate let's see. It. Call it your name or where are you calling from? Hey, what's up, Tony? This is fucking Delfino coming from Washington. What's up, Delfino? Que paso, man? Aquí, hey, big fan of y'all. Making this happen. Can't believe a hey, marvelous. What's cracking, homie? Hey, I appreciate you, homie. Gracias. Uh, how you doing? Good. I'm doing good, homie. You? Mucho gusto, homie. All good and well. That's right. Just want to stay right. over here from, um, yeah, Washington. We get a little better at, but, uh, hey, I enjoy, enjoy your show. <laughs> Crazy getting through. It's yeah. crazy to get through. I'm, I'm trying to walk my dog, trying to get through, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> okay, my brother. I hope you enjoy so, it. Uh, salute. Yeah, all the way. Um, shout out and um, appreciate y'all. It's better than, uh, look, listen, it's better than Coast to Coast Radio. And this is Tony Yeh, Coast to Coast, all the way. <laughs> so, salute and um, keep it going, canal. I don't know, brother. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. Have a good night, bro. Stay safe out there. Yes, sir. Have a blessed one. Okay, let's keep it pushing. <laughs> He was from Washington. Washington. Call your name or where are you calling from? Hey, Tony. My name is Chris. I'm from Arizona. What's good, my brother? You sound really, really muffled. I'm sorry, brother. Um, I had a question for you and Marjorie. Yeah. So my question is, um, I heard you guys talking about reparations and things earlier. Yeah. So my, my question is, um, what should I say? When it comes to like the Mexica, the Mexican people, why don't they ever talk about like when we were enslaved or where we were working mines, um, working fields, being lynched, things of those sorts? Uh, you sound very, very muffled, yeah. but from what I can make out, he said, why don't they ever talk about when we were enslaved, when we were in, I guess, in the fields? Oh, they don't want you to know nothing about that. Oh, of course not. Heck no. That'll be that'll that'll be empowering our people if they were to do that. You know, Marvelous, I have a picture on my phone of my grandmother, and this was in Juarez, because a lot of people think this, and I don't mean this in no disrespectful way. A lot of people think that black people were the only when I say black people, they they think they were the only ones that ever picked cotton. My grandmother had cotton fields and yeah. when I used to go over there, I thought it was a joy uh -huh. to pick algodón or cotton. You know, so I have a picture and in the background is a cotton field. So, yeah. So we were in the field as well. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Cause you, you always hear stuff, but you never, like no one ever shows us our history of any of that stuff or things like that. Yeah. True. And I, I talked to a lot of elder, elderly, uh, native Americans. Cause I live pretty close to a reservation. It's called the um, San Carlos tribe, the Apaches. So my friend, he's older, and he was telling me about like how when they were separating their families, 
Like they had a long line. So like you could be separated from your kids, your wife, whoever, and you would get shipped out all across the nation, across the country. Yep, brothers and sisters and are separated. You're like, and you're landlocked, you know what I'm saying? You couldn't get in like any uh, contact with them. You didn't know how your family was doing. Separation, things of those sorts. Yeah. Yeah. All good, my brother. Anything you want to elaborate yeah, on? You know, that? Wait, is it? Out of here. I know it sounds a little muffled, but I was just going to say, is there anything you want to elaborate oh. a little bit on that? Because I know you said that if our history got out there, it would be very empowering. And I think that's the last thing that this nation wants is for us to wake up, bro. Yeah, they don't want to empower us. Heck no. It takes one ant to fucking wake up a colony. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Thank you, caller. Anything well, else you want to share? You Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you, my brother. Oh, no. Just that. Uh, Thank you, guys. Okay. All right. Peace. Okay, let's keep it pushing. Here we go. Call her your name or where are you calling from? I speak to Antonio. This An is uh, Officer Johnson. We have a uh, Norby's under arrest for uh, robbing a Taco Bell. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, um, <laughs> that's crazy. Like, uh, what Taco Bell did you guys arrest him at? He's in the city of Wilmington. Oh, wow. That's right here down the street. Okay. And um, th th did he have a hey, gun? He what was going on? He, he took off he his thong and shot it at him. He was wearing a thong? I get okay, on, All good, my brother. Hey, What's hey, good? Hey, real quick. Hey, hey, I had a question for Marvelous. Yeah. You there? Yeah, he's here. Yo. What up, bro? What up? Hey, you know, okay, this has got to do with uh, death in a way or heaven. Okay. So, you know, people say, like, people, you know, people die. Let's just say, like, someone dies at the age of six or, you know, 20 year old person. Do they age? You know, people say, like, oh, well, we'll see our loved ones in heaven, right? So, if they die, like, when they're 20 years old, do they, what, what are your thoughts on that? Do they remain that age? Do they age? I mean, what? Okay, so. Like, what are your thoughts on that? So people people believe that um I like to use the images as can I use can I use yeah, yeah, stuff? yeah? Okay. So people believe that, you know, when you pass away that, you know, there's a separation with spirits and stuff and oh my my uncle right here, he's in heaven and and this is his is his brother or his or you know what, his dad. His dad is right here in, in heaven and stuff like that. So we look at it like that because that's how we've been taught, you know, in school and stuff. But what I'm saying yeah. is that it has it is nothing like that. We are not an image of a of a human or nothing like that. We don't take up no no um no fleshly appearance like you would see him with arms and whatever. We're we're a, a, a orb in a sense of energy. And this man right here is part of that orb. And all the generations that I passed on are part of that orb. So when you go up you're a representation of your family's bloodline. I mean, while well, your forefathers, it would be. And then a curse or a blessing, and both are placed upon your bloodline where you come back down and you're reborn again and reincarnated. Okay, I was going to say like reincarnation. In other right, words. yeah. People miss that whole part in the Bible where it speaks about reincarnation. Or they're not, the, the pastors up there on the pulpit not even talking about that part. He's, you know, focused on tithing. <laughs> oh, he hung up. Look, at, the my hands are right here. Oh, damn. Alex, get over here. Alex. My bad, homie. The phone Hello? hung up. Oh, he, he's there. He's still there? Is that him? Is that you, homie? No, he they hung up. Oh, shit. This guy went out for a fucking bong hit. Oh, all right. Let's go to the next one. Then. <sighs> hopefully, homie. hopefully. Hold on. Caller, your name, where are you calling from? Um, this is Sophia. Sophia, how are you doing? Hi. Um, I'm calling from Madera, California. Madera, how are you doing tonight? You got a question? I'm good. I just I just was calling to give um Tony a shout out. Yes. Just to say that he's awesome and I love his shows. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciate that. And I love watching them and you do a great job. And I love all the topics that you speak about and keep it up and keep doing your thing. Thank you very much. Like, honestly, that's truly a blessing. Thank you for being a part of the show. Yes, and, and I'm going to take that. a 
and I'm going to take a shot for you tonight too. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate Definitely. it. Okay. You're welcome. You, yeah, you keep up, keep it up, keep doing your thing and you have a great night. You too. Blessings upon you and your family. Right, tonight. Thank you. I appreciate those phone calls, bro. I truly, truly do. Here we go. Call it your name and where are you calling from? Hey, this is uh, Victor Fuentes from uh, Compton. From Compton. Ah, Victor Fuentes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Nah, hey, that's right. Hey, but um, I just want to say, you know, like I have my own uh, beliefs that and experiences as well. Um, so listening to both of you guys, I chew on the meat and spit out the bones, if that makes any sense. Um, and uh, let me pause this real quick. But uh, I had a question kind of for both of you guys. Um more on like spirituality on and again i have my own beliefs and experiences but for us that have lost like loved ones um family members and i know you guys touched on it a little bit right now but um and again i have my own experiences where um, i lost my son back in may and um i've had dreams um i've seen him talk to him yeah 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 um thank you and um so I've had my own experiences and not only that though, he was, um, native American, you know? So when we spoke to, um, his elders, um, that came to help us with his services. Cause we had, um, like, um, I want to say like a Christian service. Then we had like a Catholic one. And then because of his bloodline on his mom's side, um, uh, cause he was registered, um, they came and, and it was one of the most beautiful services that I've ever been to. Um, not just because it was my son, but they actually spoke to everybody on their indigenous bloodline. And one thing that the lady had mentioned was, you know, that he will come to us through animals. And, you know, so I have an open mind to that, you know, because of my son. Um, But I just was wondering, like, on your guys' input, you know, on that, like, do you feel as well, too, like, we still get visited today? Because I've had my first dream just recently. And it was a whole trip on its own. Um, and my youngest son, um, when I shared my dream with him that I had of his brother, he's like, Dad, I've been having dreams of him since he passed away. He's like, but in my dreams, he's not gone. Like, I have dreams of him still in the room. He tells me to go to bed, you know, get dressed. And I mean, and, 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 and it broke me, you know. But, you know, again, like listening to you guys, you know, like the flat earth stuff, you know, like... <laughs> There's some things, like I said, I, I chew on the meat and spit on the bones listening to both of you guys, you know, and I do that with everybody, you know, things that fit me and, and stuff like that. But do you feel um, from our loved ones, you know, that they do come and um, protect us and guide us, not just necessarily through a Holy Spirit and through God's uh, anointing and protection, you know, but on those that have passed on, you know, um, through that, you know, or if you guys have any experiences on that as well, too, of our loved ones, you know, because um, during this process, when I was in the morgue um, dealing with our coordinator, um, I asked her, you know, like, because she said she's been in that industry of of, of um, connecting families with, you know, helping them bury. And of course, there's a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of different ways people pass away. And um, she said, you know what, she's like, I never bring this up. And, um, I wanted to, I wait for the families to bring it up. And she says, yes, you know, especially, you know, if there's somebody that's elderly and we prepare ourselves and then they pass. But when something happens sudden, like my son, when he was, he, he just turned 18 in August, he passed away when he was 17 in May. Um, and, um, you know, she said, yes, you know, because he passed away um, suddenly, you know, and accidentally, um, you know, sometimes that's where the term rest in peace comes because not only are we worried about him, but in the sense, like sometimes we have seen in movies where, um, they don't understand that they have passed away. So they're still like confused. And, you know, we got to let them know that, Hey, we're going to be okay. The same way that we got to let them know, like, Hey, like, you know, when that comes, you know, cause everybody grieves differently. And like I said, we're still, um, coming into nine months in this, you know, but, um, just what, what, what's your guys' input on that? Do you believe that we're still guided and protected with those spirits? Um, l- let me just share something with you, bro. But before I do, I have to ask you a question. Uh, number one, how many times mm-hmm. have you dreamt of your son? Can you recall? 
uh, just just one that was just I mean it was you know and I can share it really quick um, I was in the kitchen because it just recently happened two Saturdays ago um, I was really sick um, and they determined it was bronchitis and my wife and my other son had it and we were going through it kind of like a COVID thing and I remember because he passed away on May 20th um, there in, in Los Angeles um, I don't know if you guys ever heard but my son had fell off the bridge there on um, um, there in, in on the 6th Street Bridge the one that connects to Whittier that was your boy bro? Um, my son yeah I'm fell sorry off. man to hear that yeah that, wow, I, yeah, that was my son he passed away May 20th his name. yeah so um but oh. like I said, um, so the dream that I had, I was real sick. I went to bed with the sweats, chills, all that other stuff. And in my dream, I was in the kitchen washing dishes and I heard the door open and my son, um, he had finally passed me, you know, because <laughs> I remember in April, again, he passed away in May and in April, we had a family reunion. We went to uh, Vegas, like April could not have been more um, perfect. You know, and then the next month he passed away and I kind of felt like in my spirit, you know, he was, I don't know if he was being prepared or what, you know, but I know in the 17 years that he was alive, if you guys would have seen his services, yeah. I mean, there was over, almost three to 400 people in my front yard the day he had passed away. Uh -huh. um, so in my dream, um, he walked in and again, because I remember when we were walking to Vegas, uh, we were walking and he looked down at me, he's like, hey dad, he's like, it finally happened and I like, I had to look up a little bit, you know, because he passed me by a couple of inches. And I looked and he's like, I finally passed you. And I was like, well, I'll still break you down, you know, because it's my yeah. boy, you know. Yeah. And so in my dream, he walked in the, he walked in the front door and, um, uh, of course, I broke, you know. And in my dream, like, I ran and I grabbed him and I, and, and I hugged him and I felt behind his neck. I smelt him because he always wanted a Versace cologne. I felt him. I, like, I felt his warmness. And I hugged him, and then his little brother came in, and then he's like, hey, Anthony, let's go play football. And then I was like, dude, what are you doing here? He's like, what do you mean? I was like, dude, like, what do you mean? You know what I'm talking about? He's like, yeah. He's like, all that stuff was, it was done for a reason, Dad. He's like, that wasn't me. I was like, dude, like, I saw you at the, at the hospital. I saw you in the morgue. Like, I buried you. And he's like, no, he's like, I'll explain that to you later. And then so like I was just confused in my dream and then I told him, Hey, um, I need to call your grandma, I need to call your mom, like I gotta tell the world, like, because trust me, my son in those seventeen years, um, he had a lot of different groups of friends and he impacted so many people in his day. I had so many DMs of people that like, Hey, I know you never met you, but let me share this experience where he walked kids home his freshman year because they were getting bullied and um other people like just so many people, like, people were sending me videos of him fighting other people's fights. And, like, there was a, another message because, like, I'm in the bicycle community. I don't know if you see these big ride outs that happen out there in L.A. and whatnot. But even this this lady sent me a message saying, hey, like, I need to share this story with you. Long story short, my son reached out to her son at a bike ride. Um, and she wa he welcomed her son. He didn't want to go to the ride. And my son, he was badass. Like, he could do wheelies and all kinds of crazy shit. Huh. And, um, so, um, so I'm getting a little bit confused, but, um, she told me, she's like, Hey, your son sat down with my son and took him in and bought him a bag of chips and just sat down with him. And then when we did the ride out, my son saw your son doing all these tricks and they became friends on Instagram. So, so on Saturday, when I walked into my son's room, I saw him crying and he was upset because he made his first friend during the uh, bicycle ride, you know? And she's yeah. like, I just want to say you raised an awesome son, you know, like. And so I had a lot of messages of people telling me, like, hey, like, my son was very polite, respectful, and he was a fool at the same time, you know, like, meaning in a good way, like, he was 17, you know, so when this incident happened, you know, and the PD tried to say he was going up there to take a picture, I said that was false because my son didn't even like Instagram. He wasn't even about that social media, and I actually have the video of him climbing the, the bridge, so I saw for my own eyes. Um, PD never even investigated it, but so in his dream... I told him, hey, I got to call your grandma and your mom, and um, I have to tell everybody about this. Like, you're here. Like, and I was like, dude, there's some people we got to go handle. And he's like, what do you mean? And I was like, some of your friends have been really disrespectful. And he's like, but those are my brothers. I was like, I don't care. We got to go talk to them and put tips on them. And he's like, nah, dad. He's like, and so 
And I was telling him, hey, we got to call everybody. I got to tell the world, you know, that you're here, you know, because you're a world changer. He is, you know, and I'm one that believes in, in, in you know, I tell my my friends, they always trip out because, like, my last name is Luna, bro. And, like, and, and I've talked to you, both of you guys many times, and, you know, um, I talked about the power of prayer. And, you know, I'm the type of person where, like, I can be like, hey, like, watch me turn off the lights and boom, I'll like snap and the lights will turn off like money. And I I believe in things when I envision it, like things happen. I believe in that stuff in me. Not everybody has that or not everybody believes, you know, but I do. I believe in, you know what I mean? In in, um, manifesting your own miracles, you know, in your own life, good and bad, you know, sometimes things don't feel right, but that spirit, that gut feeling, you know, so that's what I've always told people. When you feel that, trust that thing because that's something that not everybody has, you know, some people are ignorant or stupid to it or just dumb. Yeah. You know, and they don't believe in that little gut feeling. Um, so, it, 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 and that's why I'm saying I chew on the meat and stuff the bones with, with both of you guys um, because I have my own experiences. But I just really wanted to ask, like, do you guys feel that not necessarily just Holy Spirit led, God led, you know, um, because, like I said, like, do you feel like there is, again, not necessarily just like, good and bad spirits because I believe that there is but our loved ones you know like are they able to visit us and move things and protect us and like not necessarily again on a spiritual side of belief but just more on our loved ones you know I'm going to say this and I'm going to wrap it up quickly bro I, I would hope so but, yeah, sorry. I, but I could not confirm that I could not confirm that because every yeah. every dream that I've ever had of my mother she never speaks to me she never speaks to me, and I wish she did. Because I just want to hear her voice, you know? But I dream of my mother a lot, mm-hmm. and she never speaks to me, so I cannot confirm that, especially pertaining to dreams. Marvelous, anything? Um, with all due respect, homie, um, I personally, I don't. I don't believe that, right. that, that they're... they're <clears throat> um, their spirits from you know our bloodline or whatever. I believe in what it, what I've learned from studying, bro. And and um, I mean, not saying that it, it's a uh, it's anything bad because I do believe it's good. I believe that the Most High can use the 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 image of your son to to give you a message or to comfort you. Yeah, to, and to bring you comfort because at the end of the day, he he made him. You know, yeah. he made you. So he knows mm-hmm. how to contact you. He knows how to get a message, you know, through to you. And if he asks you to use your son to do it, then that's what he's going to do. Yeah. You know? I appreciate yeah, you, Caller. You know what? Hey, and, and, and Go ahead. Hey, Tony, I'm sorry. Yeah, I want to share this regarding your dream. So the day I, I have two friends, one of them lost his son when he was five. And then my other friend lost his son when he was 12. And again, it's a big difference from losing a parent, a grandparent, a tío, even a homie. You know, and losing a kid is a whole nother ball, a ball game. And um, and then I have another friend. So I have three friends in total that have lost their kids. You know, um, and it's a whole nother ball game. And and the day when I came back, because I'm out here, it's actually in the 805. Um, so when I had came back from the hospital, and it was just the way things had again, call it a miracle, coincidence, or whatever. Those three people were already here at my house. The three people, they just dropped what they were doing and they came because they've experienced what now I'm experiencing. And um, so I just recently posted on Instagram, like, man, I had a dream and it felt so real and I had to wake up to reality. And what I wanted to uh, mention, too, is after I woke up from this dream, I sat down and the moon was looking right into my window, man. Again, just like the blessings that I just accept, you know. And, and back to the blessings that you guys are talking about. A blessing is something that you don't ask for that's just given. You know, um, that's what a definition of a blessing is to me, you know, Um, but so, so they told me when I posted it about my dream, my friend um, that had lost his son when he was five and I watched what he had gone through and I still had my two boys here and I felt actual sometimes, you know, because his son and my son were both in the same age. And so when I had posted this, he called me and he was like, man, bro, what a trip, like, dude, like. You're so blessed to have that dream. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, he's like, dude, every time I dream of my son, he never looks at me. You know, and I was and he's like, so you are able to hear your son's voice, smell him, hold him. And then when I woke up, I was so confused. I felt like my reality was a dream and then my dream was real, you know. So yeah. um, 
you know, even with that, with your mom, you know, like there's something that's there. <laughs> there's Absolutely. a reason for it, you know, Absolutely, um, bro. Of, of that, you know, you know, so, um, yeah, I just wanted to just to, to, to ask that, you know, cause I know you guys talk about like a lot of good stuff, you know, and like yeah. I said, you know, for me, chewing the meat, spit out the bones, you know, but, you know, um, I just want to say, you know, just, just, just ask that question, you know. Thank you, my bro. I truly appreciate you being a part of the show. I truly appreciate being transparent and sharing that with us. Marvelous. You, yeah, I mean, I, I, my prayers and my, my heart goes out to you, homeboy. And, um, hang in there, you know. Um, I don't know. I don't know how. Uh, I can't even have no words. Homie. I don't know how it would be. I would never wish that on nobody, homie. So I could only imagine yeah. what you're going through, homie. All I can say, my brother, is God bless hey, you and hey, your family, hey, brother. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Hey, and let me share this with you as well, too, because exactly what you're saying, Mar- Marvelous, you know, I understand what, you, what, what, what you're saying. And, and I don't even know if it's right or wrong, you know, but now nah, I'll just leave it for, for, for what it is. Thank you, guys. You guys have a good night. Have a good night, homie. <clears throat> yeah. One more phone call, and then we're good. I truly appreciate him calling in and being transparent. Sharing that about his son is very, very hard. We both heard of that. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Caller, your name and where are you calling from? You are our last caller. Hello, Tony and and marvelous. This is Bosley from the Cosmos. <laughs> Bosley, you I, know I, what? I, you you ended our freaky tales. You were our last caller today. You are our last caller again today. Go ahead, Bosley. Oh my goodness! Am I turning like Mister Baca? Uh probably. Except I'm calling at the end. <laughs> so good. Let's keep it going. Okay. So, um, thank you for taking my call. Just very quick. I was listening to Mr. Luna. I'm very sorry for his son, for what happened to him. I totally feel, you know, his pain and, um, very nice of them to, uh, call in and share, you know, all of that. Look where my hands are at. So that way nobody can say, Tony, you hung up on her. Dang. My apologies. I promise you, I don't know why you're getting dropped calls, but we're going to take the last call. I'm sorry, Boss Lee. If you can call back right now, we're good. Or if not, we're going to take our last caller. Okay. So I don't know who. (laughs) I'm sorry. So. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Rude, because I'm. Oh, is that her? No, no, he's out. Oh, all right. Yeah. So, let's. Okay, let's go. We got this guy. Let me see. I don't know why it's not. Marvis, I'm going to call this number. This number, I'm going to call. Go ahead, bro. Hello. Keeps calling and, um, let me see, attempt to return call. Here we go. Let's see who this is. Hold on. Call, are you there? Uh, he's just a little worried. No. Okay, let's see. Here we go. Caller, your name, or where are you calling from? Okay, that was it. Like, that's all he fucking wanted. Okay, you know what? <laughs> Call her your name, or where are you calling from? Hey, what's up, Tony? This is Tecolote from Vegas. Tecolote, how you doing tonight, bro? You're our last caller. Let's go, my bro. We had another last caller, but for yeah. some reason we had a drop call, so let's get to your question. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Primero que nada, buenas noches. What's up, uh, Marvelous? What's up, Tony? What's up, homie? Hey, primero que nada, mis condolencias para, señor, uh, para el señor Luna. You know, it's, it's hard losing a son. Absolutely. You know, yeah, este, you know, hopefully he gets over it soon. You know, it's it's pretty hard to get over it, losing a son. Yes. And, you know, se, se siente que... You can you can feel it on him that que todavía se siente aguitado, you know what I mean? Yes. Este, pero, you just, es, son cosas de la vida que pasan, you know? 
Yeah. You know, it's, it's, kind, it's kind of crazy, you know. Uh, hace mucho tiempo yo... yo yo es, es un, pasé por esa mentalidad, you know, I just wanted to give up on everything, you know. Yeah. But, gracias a Dios, I, my, I came over here with my uncles and they took very, very good care of me and I managed to get all of, uh, through all of that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to get over it, but, you know, you just got to have to take it in, all in at once and get over it, you know. It said that his son didn't make it through, you know, and as a poco, I just lost a homeboy too, you know. Este, I guess he was just deep on some hard shit and he couldn't handle it. He ended up committing suicide, you know. It's very hard. Yeah. But you just had to have to take it in. You know what I mean? Pero mis condolences para el señor. Absolutely, my bro. You got a question or a comment or anything, my bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I first just wanted to get off my chest, you know. Este, I, his story really touched me, you know what I mean? You know, you yeah. just got to give your condolence to some people, you know what I mean? It's people that are going through some stuff. Absolutely, my and, I agree with you. Yeah. All good, my brother. And, you know, uh, one of my questions was, uh, or or kind of a complaint, you know what I mean? You know what they say, you know what you say, you know, if you got a, a common question or complaint, or if you got the ball cut, make the calls, you know what I mean? It's there. Yes. I feel like I feel like there's no reason to bring up STM's name anymore. You know what I mean. One thing that I can tell you is, entre menos atención le pongas a la gente, menos va a seguir en. It's it's gonna be less um, relevant. You know what I mean. Regarding about STM, you know, I never thought I would call about this, but you know, it's some stuff that you have to get off your off your off your chest. Hey, bro, and it's I a, agree you know, with you 100%, bro. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. But you know what the, the bad thing is? Whether it's this platform or not, I don't really care to talk about it on this platform. Anybody else can do whatever they want to do. The sad part is that when he gets released, imagine how many other podcasters are going to go live about that. Yeah. Just think about that, bro. Yep. You know? Yep. I don't really care about it, but yeah. I guarantee you a lot of these podcasters that say, fuck that guy, he's never going to be on here, they will have him. Yep. Garen fucking yeah, T, yeah, yeah. bro. Yeah. Because, because yeah. I'm going to tell you why. You know I'm going to tell you why. Because these podcasters, these lame-ass podcasters are horny for views. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. So. Yeah, that's, 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 that's something crazy, but you know, it's, there's always going to be an audience for everything, you know, even if it's, if it's in a good way or in a bad way. But, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, he did what he did, and it's not it's not cool with it. Yeah. You know, that old. Oh, good, my uh, brother. It's, it's, it's something crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really care to bring it, uh, you know, bring it up anymore. As a matter of fact, before you called, you heard me say, I don't want to talk about this shit no more, bro. It, it's a dead yeah, issue. Yeah, yeah, I heard you, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But, you know, it's, 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 it's crazy that people still talk about him. Yeah. But, you know, it's, 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 entre menos atención le pongas a la gente, it's, it's, entre, me, entre menos atención le pongas a la gente, menos le, se, se va a dar cuenta a la gente de lo que pasa. Absolutely. So if if you stop if, if everybody stops talking about him, it's gonna die out eventually, you know. Yeah. All good, my brother. Thank you yeah, uh, and, for and that another, call, bro. Yeah, yeah. And another thing is, how many likes next live where with news news with Norby so so he can drink another Bud Light. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what? He's got to get at least four hundred likes before he drinks another Bud Light. <laughs> this time it's gonna be a tall can. Yeah, yeah. All good, yep, bro. You know what I mean? Yes. Thank you, my and, bro. Uh, you know, like 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 I said, you know, mis condolences para el señor Luna. You know, hopefully he gets over it. You know. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good night, Tony. Have a good night, Marvelous. You good? I'm good, bro. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Let's go. Let's end this. We can take the shit off. All right. All right. Yo, we have a few live chat. Oh, uh, super chats, right? Chat. Okay. Um, go ahead and give them, and then we'll give our shout outs. Okay, Chargers 420, drop 499. He said, Tony, A, and Marvelous, the best duo ever. Thank you, my brother. I, th that's truly, truly appreciated, okay? Appreciate it, homie. Honestly. Uh, Caesar Macias uh, became a member. Thank you. Thank you for all of our members. We're definitely going to be uh, dropping exclu exclusive content. As a matter of fact, we need to go to Marvelous because I want to shoot, shoot him do a tattoo live. Let's do it. So that's going to be one of our next content. So make sure you guys do that. Jamie dropped $2. They said, um, look into 
Cristero War in Mexico. Cristero War in Mexico. Okay, yeah. cool. Thank you. Okay, Carlos Cruz dropped 199. He said, Mr. D back on Rhodium Radio 2024, question mark. Yes. Yes, that's all I'm going to say. Nothing else. Yes. That's it. A lot of oh, people... Go okay, ahead. no, go ahead. Okay. No, um, <laughs> uh, Marvelous, Marvelous had asked a question about the skyscrapers that are tagged up. So yeah. the question is, should they leave the graffiti on the, sky, on the skyscrapers? 529 votes. 70% said hell yeah. That's right. And 30% said hell no. Who said no? 30%. Man. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to somebody, bro, really fast. And this Get is it. what he had texted me. He said this. Night out, dad. That's what he put. With monster, rest in peace. Shout me out, carnal. Monster from San Diego, Wap Town. Thank you, Tony. Rhodium Radio, number one show. Um, he sent me a picture with um, Night Owl's dad. Uh. Okay, I spoke to Night Owl's dad one time, and I'm going to tell you how I spoke to him. Because rest in peace, Night Owl, he actually passed the phone to his father. A lot of people don't know how close I was to Night Owl. I would say from the time that I, before I, right before I interviewed him, to the time that we and him had a misunderstanding or a fallout. Okay. Um, I consider Night Owl a friend. The same way I consider Marvelous a friend. And when I consider somebody a friend, like I can have like friends on one hand and have fingers left over. Okay. Night Owl was one of them. That's why I was deeply shocked and hurt that things, you know, went the way they went. But you know what? That's in the past now. We move on from that. So I want to give a shout out to him. And also, no one has these pictures, Carnal, but share these with you, Tony. Um, just out of love, Carnal, I'm watching your show right now, live, Vatos Locos, Carnal. So once again, I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Monster for sharing these pictures. Thank you. Rest in peace, Night Owl. Appreciate you. Um, anything else, Alex? Yes, David V dropped 189. He wants to know, have you guys heard of Get Lefty Gunplay? I've heard of him only on social media. Like, I'm not really too familiar with his music. Are, are, are you? I'm not familiar with his music either, but I know who it is just because of the whole trendy shit. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, if you're trending, I guess people will hear of you. I just heard the name. I'm not too familiar with his music. So, um, other than that. Uh, um, we got one more. It said, yes. uh, I think it's Solo Uno. Uh, drop 189 they said what's good this e from north carolina all good uh thank you for uh dropping that super chat and thank you for north carolina for watching us you know what we're right here in my neighborhood in the city of wilmas on the east side and we appreciate the world tapping in like it's, it's a true true blessing uh not only do you have wilmington the harbor area but you also have east Los maravilla in the building so, it's all good um Okay, other than that, Marvelous, you want to give shout-outs? Um, thank you for having me, Tony. Absolutely. Appreciate, appreciate thank you. it. It's always a pleasure. Alex, thank you, homie, for everything that you do, everybody that participates in the show, um, including the viewers. I really appreciate you guys and your questions. And, um, you know, when you, you when you test me, too, you know, and or you teach me something, I really appreciate you guys, all that. Um, shout-out to, um, you know, all you guys, you know, try to um, prepare yourselves, man, because it's going to get worse. <laughs> going to get worse i agree i agree you know what look at i'm not trying to provoke anybody or trying to start anything marvelous but here's my thing when you got fake pages always on your youtube or on your facebook or on instagram i'm gonna call in i'm gonna diss you i'm gonna do this i'm gonna they never call in oh. you know i i don't understand that that's why i came up with the term if you got the balls make the calls the sad thing is now i'm hearing fake ass podcasters use my terminology you know, same thing, like, I almost feel like I started something, but these guys went left field with it. Like, I'm like, when I encourage Raza that now we have a voice, let's create our own platforms, let's get our voice out there. And it wasn't for us to be fucking chismosos. It wasn't for us to be fucking levas. Like, seriously, like. It was to empower our people, encourage our people, motivate our people, move our people, elevate our people. But instead, all we want to do is fucking pull our paperwork and fucking gossip at how to make spreads. This is where we're at. 
what the Chicano rappers did in the 2000s to Chicano rap, they're doing it to podcasting today. You want to be popular? Go live, fool. Talk shit. <laughs> Talk shit on somebody. And you get the views, you get the check. Fuck everybody. Not realizing you talk shit about people, you put their picture on a thumbnail. You know what happens? You walk out your house, you start looking behind your back. That's the danger that a lot of these guys put themselves into, bro. They don't fucking realize. Like, they think, oh, this YouTube money's free. I'm sorry. It's not free. Anyways, um, let me give a shout out to Alex Cervantes, Cervantes Enterprise. Uh, let me give a shout out to my son, B. Scanless. Let me give a shout out to Norby's, News of Norby's. Uh, once again, Marvelous Inc. Hit him up. He's the only man that I know that on his bio, he has his phone number. So you can call him. <laughs> that's, a, that's the part that's crazy, bro. Your number is on your bio and all these haters will not call you. Look, let me tell you something. I had this one podcaster call me. Tony, can I get Marvelous's number? So I... I can't give it to you unless I call him. Marvelous, this guy, you know, he wants... How come he don't hit me up? No, no, hold on. All right. He looks like a chipmunk, and um, <laughs> he wants your number. <laughs> and he says, Tony, that motherfucker has my number. And if he didn't, my number's on my bio, and I didn't fucking know. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah, and I'm like, bro, his number's on his bio, and he said, you have his number. And as a matter of fact, he said he's been on your platform. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know if it was still the same. It's in his bio. The fucking chipmunk chomo. Anyways, uh, other than that, uh, the hip hop Jedi to our moderator, uh, Magic Girl, thank you. Uh, everybody for tuning in. Everybody who was on the super chat. Everybody who dropped money in the super chat. Everybody who called in. Or, uh, uh, much love and respect to all of our callers, honestly. All of our subscribers. All of our new subscribers. All of our new members. Um, once again, if it wasn't for you guys, this shit would not be happening. So I truly, truly appreciate you guys. Much love and respect, okay? If you guys want to reach me uh, on my Instagram, Tony the Wiz on Instagram, or Tony Alvarez on Facebook, Tony Alvarez, A-L-V-A-R-E-Z. That's how you spell my name, okay? Other than that, uh, YouTube, leave me a comment. I never read them. Somebody from my team may read it. But uh, other than that, uh, much love, much respect. See you guys here Wednesday. Well, no, Sunday, Sunday. Wait, what the fuck is today, bro? Today is a fourth. Too, too much Crown yeah, Royal. Fourth, yeah. Hey, you know what? Wednesday, I'm going to tell you guys, you guys are in for a treat. I got the biggest promoter nationwide coming through Wednesday. You know who he promotes? You know who his booking agent is? Who? He's a booking agent for Snoop. He's the booking agent for Ice Cube. He's the booking agent for Be Real. Must I go on? And he'll be here Wednesday. And you know what? Some whack ass podcaster dropped some bogus ass paperwork on him, said some things about him, and he'll be here Wednesday. So call him. Take us away, Alex.